This episode of IE and Friends is brought to you by Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues, your ally to help tackle your allergy symptoms this season. Aaron, has your been nose has your nose been uh, tickling? Ah, one hundred percent. You feeling you know, it? Springs there. The the flowers are blooming. Yeah. You know, I just sometimes I'm just there and I'm like. Achoo! That's the cool part. I love the outdoors. I love the sun. I like being in a, I like doing park dates, mm -hmm. but I, I do start getting a little sneezy. So, I, you know, I always got to keep the Kleenex in the bag. In the allergies picnic bag. coming in. The allergies are coming. But, you know, of course, with Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues, I say bring it on because they're there. Bring it on, allergies. Bring it on. Bring Kle it on. Kleenex Ultra Soft Tissues are hypoallergenic and allergist approved. So you can attack watery eyes and battle runny noses without worrying about irritating your skin, which is extremely important. Exactly. Because Hawaii. What happened to me in Hawaii? Yo, yes, you need a Kleenex. I need a Kleenex in Hawaii. It, and we didn't I'll have tell them. you guys, I had like a crazy eye infection and uh, my eyes were getting like super watery and I didn't have any napkins and I just kept like drying them out and it just turned my eyes so red. I wish I had Kleenex on that trip. That would have helped you a lot. Yeah. yeah. So for this allergy season, grab Kleenex and face allergies head on. And now back to the episode. A chew. You know what that means, Aaron? What? Oh, he's back. Fucking prime dub right oh, now. Oh shit. So <sighs> oh prime. my god, what is your character's name? I'm what prime is, dub right now. There's no character. This is a real me. All right, but what what is your name right now? This is a real me. I'm fucking prime. I'm not. I feel like I feel like this is like your alter ego. You know how like like when Venom enters Spider Man. That's my point. So what's your alter ego's name? I want to. I think your alter your alter ego should have a name. This is uh, conspiraciones con Saul. <sighs> Crazy shit has been happening in the world. Where do we even start? There's different, different, there's a bunch of things. Quick recap of what we're gonna talk about. We got the diddler, right? Diddy, diddy or did he not? The diddler, the ship crash what was in Baltimore. Yeah. That was that was crazy. Yeah. Um, we got some other um, what would you say, Delma? Delamar Delamar Vera. Delamar Vera. When I tell you that story, it's gonna be like. And then we got Crystal. Know. What? Crystal Candelero, that one. Candelero bitch is gonna, of is, That's literally a bitch But I don't know, bro. Like, more than just bitch to be honest with you. But I want to tell you something right now off the bat, something that ruined my childhood. What? <sighs> What's going on? Have you seen Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? Of course. All right. If you're going to ask me about the name of the characters, I'll probably name it like, remember two characters' names. Do you honest. remember Coco? The crazy one, right? The crazy that bird, talk, right? The, the bird. Yeah, that would just make noises, Coco. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Do you remember what she looks like? Like a palm tree, like a kind palm tree of, bird. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I can't say I directly remember. Let me pull exactly up. Let me put up a photo. Like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fucking squiggly ass. Fucking yeah, mouth. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So her origin is darker than what you think, right? Oh boy. So the origin of Coco. She was created by a girl who survived a plane crash and is now stranded in a deserted island. So she created Coco. If you look at Coco, her body is a, is a plane. It's a plane. Let me see. You got to show me straight up. Okay. It's so. a plane. Her body's a plane. Like a crashed up plane. Oh my God. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. You see the wings? So her whole imagine, her whole thing was a plane. A, a tree, palm tree because uh, island I deserted like she and stranded the, an island the plane crash is yeah the, the wings holy shit and the feet the feet those are sunburned feet of the of the girl looking at her her at her legs for so long what the fuck's up with the mouth it's probably just some wreckage or maybe blood i don't know so and this is the crazy part the reason why she only says coco is because that was the kid that was a little girl starving like going through starvation and hallucinating and her knowing her only source of her only source of staying alive was coconuts. Right. And also Coco, one of her powers, she drops eggs of resources for like whatever you need. On the show. And the show. Okay. So like whenever they're in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, when they're doing a little adventure with Coco and they need something, Coco drops an egg. Of what they need. Okay, okay, yeah, now it's coming back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So that's what, all that little girl who was stranded in an island, all she needed was resources. 
So she created an imaginary friend who made resources for her. Isn't that insane, bro? So, okay. Quick question on this. Yeah. The character was created by a girl, right? You said it's trying on an island. Mm-hmm. So she went and made that for the um, show or was it a writer, creator, got the, her story and then did that? I'm confused. No, no. The, oh, the, that's just the origin. That's just the origin of, of the, oh my God, yeah, oh, yeah. of the show. No, not the show. Oh, no, but Coco. Of Coco. Herself. Oh, of the show. Yeah, yeah, Coco. So the writers literally gave her a, a backstory. Yeah, yeah. The writer literally, the writer confirmed this. The writer confirmed like, yeah, her creator, Coco's creator, was a girl who was stranded in an island. In the show. In the show. They didn't, he didn't, he didn't uh, say what happened to the girl. Uh-huh. Presumably she died. Uh-huh. But he didn't say that part because, you know, it's cartoons and it's kid basically, friendly. Basically, every character has a backstory, basically. Uh, yeah, where they came and how. Because how, they're all imaginary friends. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're then, all fosters. Oh, my. So her story was that. That's dark. Super dark, bro. There's so many, there's so many dark windows in, like, in, kid in cartoons. cartoon shows. I mean, you just all this, all this fuss about what's been going on with everything about Nickelodeon, just all this stuff. Even Disney has freaking accusations of certain things. Yeah, yeah. They're not like on the hot seat right now, but mm-hmm. dude, it's just and when you realize and you watch all these videos and the people like when you look this dissect and you look back, you're like, holy shit, bro! They literally take, they really take advantage of the innocence. Honestly, like a lot of the cartoons we used to watch back in even like the early 2000s why was 90s. that dude so cheeked up who the the devil in yep. um in is it cow and chicken yep why are you always you this is like the third time <laughs> you bring up that devil bro why was he so cheeked up bro? i feel like you were horny off this man those are the first that's how i fell in love with cheeks but then i realized oh, how, nah, I was like, that's a wild statement but then i was like wait a minute you know i was i was young i didn't know what the fuck was what and that they did that on purpose. I mean, but remember, we remember when we used to watch Ed, Ed and Eddie? Yeah. Bro, the girls, the sisters, I forgot their names. Were they hoes? But bro, they would always want, they're like, they wanted them so fucking bad. They were the first hoes. That's why I fell in love. Oh. With the hoes. No, but 100%, there's so many weird things. Even in Codename Kid Next Door, right? You know what's the whole thing behind it? What's the whole dark origin story? Well, I know in the thing, it was like the parents... Are like or like the adults are the evil ones, the yeah, kids yeah. are the heroes, and the teenagers are also evil as well. Yeah, but you know, all of that is fake. None of that is real. It's because number one, you know the the character number one. Yeah, the bald one. The bald one. Yeah. He has cancer. So that's him in his bed, just having this imaginary life. You saw it was like a theory on this. I saw a picture, but I think there's a theory as well. I saw a picture of it, and Loki that should made me cry. It made me tear up. Because that was my favorite cartoon. Oh, I forgot. The adults aren't the evil ones. They just never. They don't have anything to do with it. They're yeah, only, yeah. There's, there's only teenagers. some. There's, it's a teenager. In, in the yeah, in the show, there's some of them that are um, turn out to be evil supposedly. Yeah, yeah. But it's mainly them against the teenagers. Actually, look, look at this, bro. This look how sad this shit is, bro. Look at that. Yeah, I well, saw that picture and I got so sad. Because oh, bro, he's a kid with bald God. hair, with like bald, who's bald, and he's number one. He's number one. That is crazy. Oh, uh, if you're not right here, fam. Isn't that so sad? And if you're if you're hearing on Spotify and Apple, there's a picture that you guys should just look up. It's pretty great, crazy. It's so sad. So it's and it says Operation C A N C E R. Cancer. Yeah. <laughs> what? Isn't that crazy, bro? So oh, sad. Cancer. Get well soon. That's just so sad. Um. Sorry, it went so dark and deep. Talking about cancer, yeah. I don't know. This is, this is some news that just came out today. Um, Tyler Bevins or or AKA uh, Ninja, you know okay. Ninja, he has a form of skin cancer. Oh, that shit. just came out today. Oh, damn. He thinks they got him on. The, they, he thinks that he's he's ho- he's very hopeful. It's still the early stages. Oh, okay. Because yeah, they yeah. found it. So uh, today he was saying how important it is to get like regularly skin checkups. Cause it's more common than we think, so. Shit, uh, honestly, bro, I might have to go get checked. Cause I remember I used to get burnt so much as a kid. Uh, Cause I would always forget to put on sunscreen during games. Yeah. And even if I did put sunscreen before games, I'd always put it on right before, so I would just sweat off. Cause I didn't, you know, how you're supposed to layer it on your face like thirty minutes an yeah, hour yeah. before you start going swimming or you go outside before the sweat, basically. Oh my god, I uh, got. I, I got burnt so many fucking times, dude. Like I would, oh, I was always be red, not because it's my complexion, but because like I was always burnt. Yeah. I would always be peeling, bro. Yeah. My neck and everything, dude. I gotta go get checked for sure. 
to get to get more into the prime energy right now to get more primed up did you know this crazy conspiracy we ever the conspiracy is sunscreen causes cancer you know what the conspiracy is too uh everything causes <laughs> cancer bro but i swear dude it. anything in the like anything that's we're the first we're the first generation of like humans who use sunscreen no one mm -hmm. was using sunscreen back in the days for I mean, like the longest. When was sunscreen invented? Yeah, I was about to say, I mean, it's been around for... But when was sunscreen invented? Let me, let me Google this. I'm going to Siri this whole... I don't know, home. man. I feel like it's... When was sunscreen invented? Oh, there you go. The answer I found is 1938. Yeah, bro. It's been on for a while. Okay, but what about the Egyptians? Bro. What the, about... The different complexions, too. So was there no white people back then? I don't know. I can't answer that question. But also... Oh, who knows? Like, maybe they all did have skin cancer, Maybe they bro. did, but there is no, like, record of it. Yeah, so it's like, we don't know, man. No, I mean, no, no, uh. -uh. No, uh. -uh. No, uh, -uh. uh. No, uh. -uh. You like boys, don't you? Uh. -uh. No, uh. -uh. <laughs> Still, wait, tell me, tell me. You like boys. No, huh? no, uh, -uh. no, no. Yes, you do. No. Yeah. No, stop. <laughs> no. So that's, that's some weird shit going on, yeah. man. The weird okay. shit going on. Um, yeah, so uh, sunscreen causes cancer, supposedly. Uh, so does like every pr pr um, everything processed causes, food. Everything causes yeah, cancer. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, it might be true. Maybe everything does cause cancer, but I don't know, bro. Who someone recently... Oh, someone in Russia. I think they found the cure to cancer. That's been a thing, bro. I, I, do be I really do believe in the conspiracy that... 100%. The, 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 that the cure for cancer has been solved for like already a lot of years. Hey, like, been on Family Guy. You remember that Family Guy clip? Go the clip. Because there's far more money to be made in treating a disease than in curing it. Why cure someone of cancer in a day if we can treat them for a lifetime and bill them every step along the way? What? That's insane. Brian, it's so cold in here. Look how big my nips are. Yeah, it's been, Is, there's been a cure, but then they never let it out or people that have, have found it just get like fucking. Because it's going to kill uh, big pharma industries. Cause, yeah, fuck, yeah, bro. Like, I think it's funny when people are like, oh, like the people that don't believe it, right? I mean, I understand because there's no proof behind anything. Give but the president it's pretty. It's pretty easy to yeah. hide things when you have so much connections to a lot of things and how like when you have that much money, dude, and you have that much power over a lot of people. Dude, it's like it's, it's you know what soup, though, dude. You know what we'll find out, we'll truly find the answer to, because um, the I forgot her name, but the royal family, two of them have cancer. Just came out. She hasn't been seen since December. She finally came out, and uh, she says she has uh, I think some um, form of skin cancer or something like that as well. Yeah, and mm -hmm. also I think uh, Henry, no, one of someone. Sorry, I, I'm just I'm just off the prime right now. But another person of the royal family, someone big, I think is the king or one of them one of the older people they got they also got cancer so if any if anybody can outlive cancer it's them because mm -hmm. they for sure have knowledge to the insane amounts of stuff that's out here in the world yeah so uh um i also yeah like i i believe in certain conspiracies not a lot but the ones that do seem viable are the ones where like they found cures to many things and like i also feel like they've found the cure to like a lot of like a lot of like crazy stuff that's you know, supposed to kill you, like, like yeah. you know, AIDS, H, like a lot of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I feel like they found that a long Magic Johnson, time ago, bro. bro. I'm not saying he has connections to like no stuff, but I mean, I don't know, bro. That's crazy how like all this many years. But I mean, some people would say like, he has the best medical, like you know, yeah, yeah, best medical care. You know, all the money in the world to like be able to take care of himself. So there's that, you know. But yeah, dude, I just feel like. When it comes to like phar pharmaceutical companies and big pharma like that, dude, they run the world. They run the. Uh, they're one of the part of those people that run the world. Besides other, you know, like you know, big, you know, like the government and like you know, big corporations, you know. Yeah. So like, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if there is cures for all these things, but they just don't want to release it because it's it's trillions of dollars that they're gonna lose, or like mil billions of dollars they're gonna lose, man. So it's like, money runs the world, dude. It's, you know, money does run the world. Yeah, but I I definitely do think the pharmaceutical companies they're the ones on top because at them the end and, of the day them it's and the big health. corps yeah because like corporations at the end of the day it's the health because let's say you're a big ass corporation right but you just got some disease who are you going to go to pharma oh sorry yeah you're right you're right sorry yeah, yeah. sorry sorry you're right you're right you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> who are you gonna call Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. so yeah you but you know what um 
what's a uh, a natural antibiotic to help you just cure a bunch of different things like helps reduce anxiety stress depression yerva you're very close <laughs> marijuana closer trees oregano trees <laughs> what trees you can hug trees and you feel a hundred thousand better. Hundred hundred percent better. Hundred thousand percent better. Oh, I thought you were gonna give me something real, man. Bro, trees are real. We're uh, trees are trees real. When you water them, do they grow? They do take a very long time to grow. So are you energy? Do you radiate energy? You're a living thing. Every living thing radiates energy, right? Okay. Yeah. So trees, they have been here for millions of years. And they take a long time to grow and they're deeply grounded in the like, earth. Yeah, into the earth. They, they, they're everything. They're the most natural things, right? Mm -hmm. So if you hug a tree, you get like their, watch, let me read my notes. Okay. I did some research on this one. You heard it here first, guys. What? Cancer? Hug a tree. Hug a tree, bro. Did your girl break up with you? Hug a tree, dog. It's called forest. It's actually called forest bathing. Uh, the, um, Japanese culture, they practice this a lot, forest bathing. You just go into the forest and just, you're stress-free, bro. So it reduces stress, improves immunity, it lowers your blood pressure, and uh, accelerates recovery from illness or trauma just by hugging trees. Because, you know, all living things have energetic vibrations. And so it's just a good for both physical and mental well-being. So uh, it's pretty proven that it does it. Okay. I mean, what's the downside? I like it. I I would love for that to be one thousand percent. It true. is a thousand percent true. Uh -huh. Just I don't because know. they don't talk doesn't mean they don't like. They can't help. I would like to see some studies on it. That'd be cool too. Cause think about it. But like, where that, do we get our medicine it, from? No, that's my. You know what? That's my thing, bro. Mm. These studies. Who? Who's? That's. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You know who controls those studies? Mm. So it's like when they say like, oh, this is actually very, very healthy for you, according to these studies at the fucking blah, 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 now, blah, Who blah. are you to tell me what's healthy? Huh, Mr. Doctor? <laughs> With hmm? your 12 to 14 years of schooling? Who approved that PhD? Doc. <laughs> who approved hmm? that doctorates? Hmm? It's kind of weird. Even a, who's approving any of these degrees? Yeah. Who's, you know? Who's, the de who, who's got who, the degrees? Who of a, the <laughs> fuck made you a doctor, huh? Yeah. Who, who said, you know what? This guy's qualified. You know what Who's, who? 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 Shit is not real, bro. None of this is real. But trees are. So yeah, go we're hug falling a tree. way too deep into like a whole like, like nothing's real, man. To be honest, at this point, I just it doesn't. Once you realize that you can hug a tree and you'll feel better, none of this. Shit I really want to believe it. I really do want to believe it. Because you know when you hug someone and you instantly feel better. Uh, depending on who. Look. I can't just go out and hug someone random. Yeah, I mean, you can give some random dude a hug, but it's just that that dopamine that releases. Mm -hmm. It releases the exact same dopamine releases when you hug a tree, mm -hmm. and um, you just feel so much better and grounded. That's why they say when you manifest, the best way to uh, manifest is when you ground your feet, you take off your shoes and your socks, and you touch grass while you manifest. Now you feel like a little tree. Okay. And then you water yeah. your feet. So you're saying like. When you go out and you hug a tree, what does it help? You're talking about like- Give it just, a little hump too, bro. Okay. Let's let's just not violate these trees either. Let's Give see, it a little thrust. There's no consent there, A sir. little smack. Give it a little smack. You like that, you little tree? When huh, trees, you little redwood? When, when, huh? I'll give you my redwood. <laughs> <laughs> if trees in the future end up talking, bro, you're going to get so much cases on you, bro. <laughs> That tree's gonna come to you, bro. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> my, yo, you should see the holes my the the back my tree in the backyard has. And there's there are no woodpeckers around here. Yo. <laughs> yo. I'm the only woodpecker, <laughs> dog. You get you get what I'm saying? You're pecking wood with you your get, wood. You give me give me some oh, give me some. Man, your shit must be very crusty, bro. Must be dry as shit, dude. You're humping oh, wood, yeah, bro. Dog. Um you know, there's so what you, so what you're saying is when you're hugging a tree, you're. I know I was kidding about the whole yeah, you hug a tree, it can cure a lot of stuff. But you're talking about like, like anxiety, stress, stress. Anxiety, stress. Immune. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, for a second, I you believe like, I oh, believe my own joke for a second. You're over saying like if you hug a tree, you can cure like your, your illness. Yeah, yeah. And all that. I'm nah, like, nah. Okay, I was like, all right, let's just maybe if you try hard enough. I don't know. I don't know about that. If you hug maybe if you hung, if you hung, if you hug. Hey, yo. No, no, sorry. Hug. I, I messed up. I, no, 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 hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Make if you hug. I was like maybe if you hug long enough. I was like nah. It's, 
yeah, yeah. I don't think that's a thing. But okay, anxiety, stress, overwhelmed. You want to go outside and just hug a tree for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there's different types. There's different ways to hug a tree. There's like I saw like let me see if I can pull up the website. There's like the regular like two hand one. Yeah, it's there's a two one, hand one. The side, the side, the one where you hold it lower, where your hands have are lower. Yeah. The one where you put your leg around it and hug it. You can group hug. You get all the your one homies. where you just like both legs and you're <laughs> hugging it. <laughs> you get all your homies and you guys just group hug the tree together. There's a bunch of. There's a bunch of ways. Watch, I think hugging uh, a fat redwood. Oh, I would love to have hug a. Fat you know how redwood. big a fucking redwood is, bro. Yeah. Those are humongous. We should just make this podcast about trees and just like I think we're changing our 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 identity to just trees. I eat in trees. Yeah, there's different ways to hug trees. Different, like I'm basically any. We want to lean it. You want to lean against it if you're too shy. You just want to at least touch it. Just go ahead and go go touch a tree. <laughs> oh. When people say go touch some grass, hundred percent. Even like like sunlight is so important. You get me? Oh God. Vitamin D. How about this, that vitamin tree? This tree. Yeah. Damn, yeah, I like it. I like it, dude. I need to appreciate trees more. You ever appreciate a tree? You ever look yeah, at a tree bro, and be like, that's a good you, ass when tree? You, when you actually just like sit back and realize like what science has taught you and you're like that trees literally give off oxygen. Like we need trees to breathe. I'm yeah. just like, stop cutting these fucking trees down, man. And it's always it's always been so crazy to me that you can find out a tree's age. Just by the by the, by the bar, rings. By the rings. Yeah, you cut crazy. down a tree, you find out its rings. And you it's count age. the rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Damn. Fucking trees, bro. Shout, shout out, out to the, if you're a tree and you're why watching we, this. Why I was gonna sound like fucking Rick Ross. He's like, shout out to all the pears. Shout out to all the trees. <laughs> I was like, shout out to all the trees, bro. Yeah, so. we sound so hippie right now. Fucking, and tree. I love it, dude. Fucking, I need to it. go on a forest detox. I need to go like on a detox. I just want to go out to the forest and just like lay there. You know, I did that one time when I went to Cancun. I laid down. It was probably the worst thing to do, but I went to the pyramids, and um, this this is like my one of my rituals. Of how like I, you know, made it to where I'm at. I, I did a couple of rituals. I'm not even gonna lie. First ritual I did, I do I do many. Uh first one was I went to the pyramids in Cancun. Mm -hmm. And I I I swear to you, bro, I'm not even lying. I'm not even lying. That's not even a joke. No, I yeah, I'm not, you're, even, I'm not even joking right now. I'm just laughing because the fact that you're doing it, you actually did this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Because yeah, I'm yeah. so I know there's energy. Okay. I just know there's so much energy in the pyramids. So I was like, come on, man. I got I got Aztec, I got Mayan blood in me. I got Aztec blood. They they the, the spirits here fuck I mean, with me. You don't know that for sure. I don't. I'm actually Spaniard. But so they probably don't fuck with me. <laughs> but um, so I went to the pyramids, right? And uh I looked at them and I was like, oh shit. And it was like a nice sunny day. And I just laid down. I just laid down, you know, just facing, just facing, like just facing the sky right next to the pyramids. And I was just like, just give me all your powers. Like, just give me all the good energy. Give me all your powers. And I laid there and I soaked in all the good energy and I just started manifesting all the things I wanted. Did you hum anything? No, but we'll get into the humming there. It's just crazy. But um, yeah, so I did that, right? I did that for a cool, like, maybe five, 10 minutes. And I was just, I, I was doing, I was meditating. I was manifesting just by the, by the pyramids, the great energy of the pyramids. And um, long story short, when we get back to our hotel room, our hotel room is flooded. I don't know how the fuck, but there's water up to our ankles. And we're like, what the hell happened? And uh, nothing was open. Like, there was, like, we didn't see no drips from anything. From anything. Our floor was just flooded, and uh, we had to get a new room. But my cousin was like, I think you pissed off the motherfuckings, motherfucking t the, the Mayans or something. How dare you. So I, I was like, that shit was crazy. But, um, God damn it. Just recently too, the way they built the pyramids, and um, so they have like a snake, right? They have a snake head at the bottom, and uh, once one, and this only happens once a year at a certain time. Uh, when the sun is in the correct position, the snake head and then like the shadows from the pyramid, it creates a long ass, a long ass snake on the pyramid, like coming down from the pyramid. So it's like the snake head, and then because of the shadow of the other corner of the pyramid, it creates the body of a snake. Have you ever seen that? No. By placing the pyramid of Kuk I'm a, it's called, I'm a butcher this so hard. By placing the pyramid of Kukulkan in a certain angle, taking into account the distance between the platform's angles related to the staircase, this creates the shape to the body of one of their main 
uh, deities, which means gods. Mm -hmm. Kulkan, the feathered serpent, whose head is sculpted at the foot of the pyramid staircase. So you can see, like, the snake head. I mean, the snake body. Okay. Look. Don't worry, guys. Uh, there's going to be a Yeah, photo there'll be photos. Here. There'll be photos. Yeah, because I remember so I saw a comment on our last video saying, like, I want to see what's being laughed at. <laughs> like, they're like, we can't even see what you guys are talking about. Okay. So, mates. Oh, shit. Okay. Pretty right? cool, so right? The mouth and then the body. Oh, yeah, yeah. that leads up. Oh, shit. Pretty dude, wild, right? Exactly what they're doing. And then there's an actual picture of the fucking snakes right there. Yeah, yeah. That is Christ. You know what's the crazy thing about snakes? What? So, in Christian, like, you know, in the Christian Bible, and I think even now in like the West, like just in the in the Western religion, what does a snake signify? Um, I think like evil. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like the devil, evil, or like evil. Well, just like yeah, pure evil, bad luck, whatever. Right. Okay. But did you know? Back in these days, the snake actually represents God and good. The thing is, when they came when the conquistadors came over here to Mexico. They saw that they were all worshiping the snake, and they're like, "No, that's the devil." So to help them convert into Christianity or into, oh no, I think that was and to help them convert, to convert them into uh, Catholicism. Catholic, what did you say? Catholicism. Catholic, Catholicism. Yeah, you know. What's yeah, fun. you know what you're talking about. Being Catholic. Yeah, yeah. So it converted it converted everybody to Catholics. Mm -hmm. So um, well, the I thought it was Christians. No, I think they came in as Catholics. Because think about all the, all the like uh, okay. the missionaries. Okay. I don't know, if the, but I think the prime is fogging my brain up. It's so one hard. of the two. We know that it's one of yeah. the two. No, no, I think it's uh, Catholics. Okay, for sure. Because uh, yeah, even all the all the missions out here in. in the West. So basically, when they came over here, they're trying to convert them. So they'd say like, "Oh no, your snakes actually it's not good. It's evil." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Stop that's where worshiping that, comes that from. snake. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but technically, the snake is. Supposed to be good representative to, and then who's the one that would look up to snakes like this? Uh, Mayans, Aztecs. Oh, okay, okay. So to them, the snake was represent yeah. representation. Even in other, good. even in other religions, I mean, other uh, countries, like back in the day, a lot of their gods were snakes. A lot of them had like snake heads, and it goes back to the reptilians. Oh shit! Oh the real. shit! No, oh my god, they're real. They're the reptilians the are real, dude. They're they actually taking... run the world. I think they run the world, bro. I think reptilians, now everything's, see, now the prime's hitting. That's when everything makes sense now. Because if they, if the Mayans and the Aztecs and all these other religions, if they worship snakes, and now what's what people are saying that like, oh, who runs the world? Lizard people? Reptilians? Hold on. I think there's, there's a commonality here. I'm getting scared, bro. Oh, shit. They're going to come for us, dude. We better watch out. If I ever get approached by a reptilian... Like I'll I'll let I'll let people know. I'll, I'll pretend like I have like I'll do like a double agent type of thing. Like you're in their crowd, but you're actually like exposing them. Yeah, that'd be sick. But I feel like you'd find out really easily. I feel like I get murdered. I yeah, you'd get murdered. My whole very... bloodline will disappear. Yeah, your your whole family's gonna just disappear out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. All at the same time too. Yeah, they're gonna send everyone. So no. Um, let's um transition. You want to jump ships? Oh, speaking of ships, <laughs> jump ships. You fuck you with that? You like that transition? <laughs> Sad, but yes. Yeah, so just recently uh, for us, I think, what, two days ago, the Baltimore, uh, is, was it Baltimore? It was in Baltimore, you? yeah, and the bridge. Yeah, the Baltimore Bay Bridge. Um, recently, just uh, a ship hit, uh, crashed into the bridge, tore down the whole bridge. Um, weird things with that ship. Uh, it lost power. Yes, that's the story. Yeah, so it lost power and they couldn't turn it. Was the ship originally going to go under the bridge, or did yeah. it, it just yeah? Yeah, right? yeah, it was supposed to. Yeah, I mean the bridge. But is then there. it just hit the. It just hit literally the freaking the thing that's making it stand. The yeah. middle one, bam. You know what's crazy about that ship? Same ship, had the exact same problem, and um, fuck, where was it? Somewhere in the UK, had the exact same problem, but it hit a it hit a um a port. Okay. So it hit a port. Like same thing, power went out and it crashed into the port. Nothing too crazy. Mm. Um, it happened again here, exact same ship, uh, but crashed into uh, a bridge. And I think uh, it took the lives of yeah, because there was people on that bridge. Yeah, while it happened. I think it took the lives of four people. Fuck. I think three were rescued, which is Whoa. great. 
Um, but yeah, they did. It did crash in the middle, like in the middle of the night. So in the morning, so there was barely any traffic, which was good. Um, I think the people who um, who died were some construction workers who were on there. It's always, to, always, just, always the working just class, bro. To, just trying to earn an always, honest yeah, dollar, yeah. bro. And over here, and they get killed off some fucking negligence, bro. Yeah. So they said it wasn't no terrorist attack. Um, do you believe it, though? I don't know, man. I, take I don't want to. I know. It's such a touchy subject. Yeah, I don't want to just. But yeah. like, yeah, I don't know, bro. Like, if you already know that shit had problems. Mm. I don't know how long ago that UK one was. Yeah, yeah. But like, shouldn't you just want to like just not. Send that one out again until you for sure know it's not gonna happen again. Big ass boat, it's a bro. big ass cargo ship. Wasn't it a cargo yeah, ship? It's a cargo ship, yeah. Dude, it's like you know, that causes damage for sure anywhere. And you can't just hit stop on that. Yeah, dude. So it's kinda like, I don't know, bro. Like I feel like it's just negligence. hundred percent. It's just like I don't know, dude. Supposedly Andrew Tay and Elon Musk, they both said it was like a cyber attack. You know how like that one movie that came out on Netflix. Um, yeah. What was it called? What was the movie called? I know what you're talking about. I don't forget the name of it. Yeah, yeah. But supposedly it was a cyber attack of that, like that, where um, it was hacked and then they cut the power and that's how it happened. Um, FBI so, I mean, and the Central Intelligence, at this they, point, they said with, no. With the, inf- with, with the little info we have, I'm open to any suggestions or like yeah, yeah. Um, outcomes of what they think happened. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's, I mean, I can't say stupid. I'm just going to say Okay. There, right now, everybody's just putting all the different possibilities yeah, until we find yeah, out yeah. what it is. I, I'm I'm open to hearing different possibilities. Because, yeah. bro, there's no fucking way a ship just... The power just cuts out like that. Bro, if you have a big-ass container ship that is worth, at, like, hundreds of millions of dollars, and it has millions of dollars in the cargo, how can a ship like that just... just does, does It doesn't work. Like what's up yeah, with the maintenance? I, I don't. I can't speak on cargo ships, bro. So I'm not like an expert on it. So maybe yeah, some yeah. expert be like, it happens all the time in the middle of the ocean. Blah blah blah. They just it comes back. I don't know, dude. I don't know what, anything about cargo ships, so I can't even say like, oh, how can this happen? Like, what if like that's something that just happens, you know? Because there's so much power being used on this it ship. Can't be. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I don't know. I can't say yes or no. Like this does happen a lot. It doesn't happen a lot. It happens quite often. No, you know that stuff. But it's kind of. From right now, from the outside looking in, without any info, like, yeah, it's just weird that you just have a big-ass cargo ship, and it just loses power, like, just... Right there. Twice, too. Yeah, twi- yeah two, it, it happens twice. where it doesn't happen in the UK, like you said, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. the same one in Baltimore. That's just fucking wild. Yeah. And um, did you know, if you buy a cargo ship, you, get, you, you invest into that cargo ship, you get your money back in a year? That's how much money they make? I feel like you'd make it back even quicker than that. Probably how much is a cargo here. ship? Let's just range. Let's Google it. Let's Google that. We're here. We're going to bring all the info, guys. No more vibes. No more vibes. All right. We're switching it up. We're going to do actual fucking. Oh, wait. 20 million. Jesus. Okay. Maybe a year. And uh, nah, but car- imagine how much cargo costs, bro. But they said, um, so a bulk carrier will have around $35 million. So there you go. I mean, it costs you. Tw- it costs you twenty in a year. You'll make fifteen million dollars. It costs you five million. For- it costs you. It will cost you twenty million. Uh huh. And then you will make around thirty five million. The in first a year? year. Yeah. Oh, um, shit. a super tanker around one hundred five million in large and, yeah. So a super tanker, which will cost you a hundred million, will make you two hundred million. Yeah, bro, it's a good investment for sure. Yeah, I just didn't want to get a cargo ship. Because um, recently there's just been a lot of like blackouts in the ships. So I was like, you know, that's a liability. So I like I would have bought one, but I, you know, I care about. I get the you. People. You're just trying to stay safe. Yeah. And I you know how you. many cargo, t- you know how many cargo containers get lost at sea? A lot. A lot. Like, really? That's yeah. not like an f- actual fact. Yeah, it's a fact. Watch, I'm gonna search this up real quick. Are they like the super small ones though? How many? No, no, like the normal ones. Like how many cargo containers? Uh, oh, containers get lost at sea. Oh, I think I'm like the ship. For a second, I thought you oh, said you the, the ships. Ship. No, I'm no. like, that's fucking crazy. Twelve thousand shipping containers lost in the world's oceans. Isn't that crazy? That's a lot of fucking money, bro. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. if you ever discover that cargo ship, I mean, I don't know how you know. We don't know how deep that is, so we, you know, don't know, don't know when you'll ever discover these cargo ships. On average, oh no, an average, yeah, an average of fifteen hundred containers were lost at sea each year. That's a lot. And we don't know what is in those cargo Or who's containers. in the cargoes. Taking another sip of the Prime. Who? Oh, that's crazy, dude. 
I think a lot of the I trafficking, a, a lot of the trafficking happens like through the containers and all that stuff. The shit that gets lost there. No, but bro. even like the sex trafficking and all that stuff. That's sad. They get it's through tra- the containers. Bro, remember how J.P. Morgan, one of the containers had a shitload of coke in them. Like, do you oh, remember yeah, that? J.P. Morgan. That's right. Didn't it? yeah. And that shit, everybody just forgot about that. J.P. Morgan is still in business. You pay for the silence, my friend. How is that even possible to because find look, all these drugs by a J.P. Morgan container the, look, and they still, everything's okay? Because remember, the corp- these big corporations, not everything, not everything, mostly everything will be hidden, but not everything can stay a secret for so long. Yeah. But some things will come out, right? But they pay for that silence after it comes something out. Something happens, something, and something happens that just hushes everything down. Yeah. Like the diddler right now, the diddler supposedly did he did or he, did he not did he not his um his mansion just got raided and when you get raided that means they have they have the go to get raided so they have a lot of evidence they have a, a lot warrant of and everything they yeah. have everything they need so basically you're 80 percent till you get to jail you're you're heading going you're going to jail. if you're getting you're, raided you're, you're most to court. likely you're going headed to, jail. to court you're headed to court yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You're, it's, you're, remember it's still all allegations still allegations we can't say this is facts and like the raid has happened yeah that's fact. yeah yeah the raid but happened everything that he's a uh, being um like the rumors and everything that he's go- it's still allegations that mm-hmm. hasn't been proven in a court of law Fifty Cent he's he's on Diddy's head because he doesn't like Diddy yeah, bro dude and he's I've like, always had that sketchy vibe about Diddy like my any like my entire life anytime he's ever popped up on anything I'm like bro this motherfucker just looks like a fucking dickhead yeah he's like, a weird guy literally not even because this whole fucking thing's been coming out I always thought like this motherfucker for sure has done some shady shit like yeah, yeah. his entire life I'm I'm literally the ones that truly believe that he got Tupac. And Biggie Smalls killed. For sure. I do believe in that conspiracy. I think that. I, I, I believe in that conspiracy 100%. I think so. And I know like, well, I mean, Eminem has even said it. Eminem said it. In but, his song, he said that, yeah. you know, he put out a hit. But in the, on the song, just so he doesn't become a part of the case, he said, haha, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. He put that in there just so he doesn't become part of that case. Yeah, yeah. But he knows. That's Eminem, bro. Eminem was so tapped in. So even 50 Cent. So that's probably why 50 Cent doesn't like D- uh, Diddy. But um, yeah. Supposedly he was uh he escaped like he took his uh his private jet and they went out to the Caribbean. But uh, he didn't get seized. His private jet got seized. Yeah, got too, seized. Right? But he yeah. wasn't in the jet. He was actually he was actually in Miami. Yeah. Because I know recently um one of his I forgot who it was that's part of his thing filed a lawsuit against him because he has all the inside scoop. He had a hidden conversations, hidden mm-hmm. videos of him and his team. Throughout the years, mm. I don't know. I can't remember if it was one of his. Lo- <sighs> Please let I me think, look. At this. Let me look at it real quick. Let me look at it real quick. Yeah, yeah. I think Please. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because the actual lawsuit going in onto him, that's just gonna expose Everything. a lot of shit, a lot of stuff. So it's kind of crazy. Um, I don't want to butcher it because I it's an actual it, fucking thing, dude. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. let me find it real quick, and then um, we can get back into it because sure. this is fucking crazy, dude. So, there's a lawsuit now uh-huh. against Diddy okay. by one of his, well, by a music producer that, that worked for Diddy at one point, Rodney Jones, okay. that basically has come forward. And basically, you can't do a lawsuit without, and your law, lawyers can't create a law, like they can't come out with a lawsuit. Un, it's very legal unless they have legitimate evidence, um, evidence and that, that exists, right? So, here's the reason why. So, that's the crazy part that. This lawsuit's going forward because there's legitimate evidence evidence against them, according to yeah. this, right? Remember, this is all still speculation and all that. We can't say it's for sure, right? So a lot of it, he he claims in his statements that he has a hundred hours of video, photo, and uh photo evidence of just Diddy and his whole staff and his whole team doing a Ill- very legal stuff like being at parties with other celebrities, other musical people, executives, you know, uh, associates, politicians at these parties where there's also underage girls Mm -hmm. drinking and they're also spiking drinks with drugs and all this stuff and um, just doing illegal stuff, right? So he has photos, videos of all that stuff. 
and that Diddy has his not guy his head of security called Fahim Muhammad. Yeah, I think Fahim Muhammad. I think is correct. Mm-hmm. Um, Mahad or Fahim Mahad or something like that. I forgot how it's pronounced, but uh, not Muhammad. Sorry, from Fahim Mahad or something like that. Right that um, he was a guy that was known of to clear things and to make anything disappear. So anytime his team had problems, to contact him to make like problems go away. Yeah. So because there, there's a one where, there's allegedly where Diddy shot a guy dead in the room and there's a lot of blood. P- police were, were on the scene for hours and there was no arrests made. Um, uh, what's it called? But because the whole team told... Diddy basically told them to tell them that it was a drive-by shooting or whatever hmm. and that no arrests were ever made but they're on the scene for hours see that's the crazy shit bro um, the cops are also corrupt 100% so, not all of course but yeah, like yeah, not all, but in certain parts of yeah, certain like cities the sheriffs and all that in stuff. certain cities in certain parts they money can be talks. corrupted money talks money talks and P. Diddy's got power sh- and money talks they got a bunch of money they're like hey bro you want to you want to stay in office well we got you we got we'll talk we'll talk to their people we'll talk to the crowd Remember, this is a dude who has a lot of power in the rap game music gang and you know we've seen all this stuff coming out with him and Meek Mill where like you know and just all this stuff where basically he was doing a bunch of like very like just sus sus activity okay. and then now he's linked to a lot of legal activity also linked to allegedly to you know sex trafficking, sex trafficking you know um you know grape yeah graping you know it's scary you know i think all this stuff is scary and people um like just getting roofied and all that stuff is wild uh but starting july in here in california bars will now be offering drug testing kits to put to uh to put in your drinks great i know that i think that's been long that's overdue. fantastic yeah i feel like they should have them there yeah long overdue long overdue i think uh it's gonna where is it oh yeah 2400 businesses in california will now have to offer drug testing kits to bars and nightclubs clap it up man that's, clap, that's shout fucking. out to california shout out to california and even there'll be signs like they have to put up signs like we offer drug testing uh, kits from straws from I strips fucking love that i think it's been long overdue because long bro overdue. that is such a common thing in nightclubs and more bars. than you think more than you think more than you think so if you just have a free test kit just keep that boop find out stay safe this summer it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fun summer it's gonna be a safe fun summer shout out to california way more states Every state should be offering this. I don't know why they're not offering this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's incredibly important. Because it's very important, especially for the safety of just, you know, women that just want to go out and just have a drink or have fun, yeah. you know? And then your night's getting ruined by some fucking creep that's just trying to, you know... Yeah. It, 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 dude, long overdue, like you said. Also, it doesn't just help women. It helps everyone in general, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Also helps any, like, you know man who's getting like any dude who like you know, let's just say yeah, he's guys like a, get roofy too you know they do you know for any whatever reason it is yeah, to like yeah. to like you know extort them or whatever you know for their money or whatever anything so this is a great great thing for just you know women and men as well you know yeah. so it's just like, for our safety just for the safety because bro have you like i feel so bad i'll never forget this day i um i was invited out by two of my homegirls because they wanted to have a great night right they wanted to get lit they had a stressful week so they're like, hey, so can, we're going to get lit as fuck. Can you just watch over us and make sure we're cool? I love that. Yeah, And I'm like, sure. yeah, I'm there 100%. So we went to the club and um, probably like two hours in, one of my friends, she got incredibly drunk. And mind you, like she does get drunk, but her best friend also gets drunk. And they're always taking the same amount of shots, same amount of drinks. And that girl was still like cool. But the other girl, she couldn't even stand up. Damn. And we're like, there's, we came to the conclusion. I was like, I think this girl got roofied without like even with me being there oh fuck that's the part like maybe it's just when i went to the restroom mm. or if i went to the bar and w- when you went to the bar and they were like right there and yeah they're boom. still yeah or when you went to the bathroom they probably went to the bar without you at one point exactly. and then bloop, so it's yeah. so much more common and it happens so fast so i think that's why it's incredibly important to one have a dd have someone that's sober who's kind of like the the overseer but now with these strips i think and the the drug testing kits it just makes you makes your peace. It eases your peace of mind, you know. So mm-hmm. yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, dude. The amount of times I have to play bodyguard when I go out with my mm-hmm. my homegirls is crazy, bro. Like yeah. I'm there having a good time as well. Don't get me wrong, but especially when I know like I'm one of the only dudes there. It's probably like just me or like two other like me or another guy. And there's like what like what five of my homegirls there, just you know, just trying to have a good time. Like, bro, like 
you gotta stand on business. Like I'm, I'm really, I'm literally there. I'm having a good time, but I'm also there. Like okay, I'm playing. Bo- I, the times I have to play bodyguard bar is crazy because yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we'll literally be in, a, in our own little circle vibing or whatever. And in the amount of times that dude just come creepily behind, bro, just trying to like and like no, not even asking to dance. They literally just come just, from behind, grabbing. Like bro, who the fuck you think you are? I get you, my boy. Like. No, like you can't fucking ask for a dance. Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you trying to just grab him from behind and get that quick fucking little like little dry hump, hump in there? That shit's like, weird. bruh. Yeah, dude. No, like, I, I just doesn't hurt to be like, like hey, hey, can I see your hand. You wanna dance? Yeah, hey, yeah. you want a dry hump? You can't even fucking ask, bro. You yeah, can't even yeah. do a simple like that. Sounds dumb as fuck to ask, but like not even the courtesy to be like, you know what I'm saying? Dance. Even though yeah, it's a yeah. dumbass question, but like, bro, come on, dog. Consent is key. Come on, so. Bro. It's gonna be uh have a safe have a safe summer. I know we're also on spring break. Uh, Baja Fest is around the corner. There's gonna be there's a lot of parties going on. Everybody stay safe. Watch over your friends. Mm-hmm. It's crazy how we have to say that mm-hmm. because people are just. I've heard so many stories of people who just leave their friends behind. Like mm-hmm. if your friends are leaving you behind when you're super drunk, that is not your friend. They don't, I don't care like how annoying my friend is when they're drunk. I'm gonna make sure they are safe. Yeah. Because that's what happens at like that's where everything bad happens when someone's those stories out. that you hear. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, my friends left me. I was like, bro, and then now you as a friend, you're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Just, I didn't want to deal with this. Well, deal with it, bro. It's a fucking human life. Yeah, bro. I had a I knew this girl who um she got beat up by her best friend when they were drunk. Wow. Like to a point to like a bloody pulp. Jesus Christ. I was like, what the fuck? Who who are your guys' friends? Uh, that's just who crazy needs enemies, here. bro? Who needs enemies, dog? <laughs> when you have friends like when that. you have friends like that, quote unquote friends. Yeah, but since we are in the we are the sun is out. I'm so excited. The sun is finally out, and I feel it. I feel it running through my my veins, Why, bro. Kiki? Why? I feel it, dog. I I went out earlier today in the morning, and then the sun just hit me, and I felt the demons coming out. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of like, fuck. It's gonna get hot again. God, yeah, but damn it. this is your first year. Where you're not as heavy anymore, so I don't think you're gonna be sweating, dog. I nah, think you're I'm gonna be you're gonna be out here. I'm a, I'm a sweater. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sweater. I'm just, Jesus Christ, bro! What's wrong? Why is that dog sound sick as fuck? A lot of cigarettes. Dog. Oh my god, sound that dog sound like he's been smoking cigarettes for Just, 20 bro, years. Aaron, this year's summer. I'm excited, dog. I'm 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 still a sweater, bro. I do not find the heat comfortable whatsoever, bro. It really just depends on the clothes. It depends on the the. the I type like of you know I like layers, bro. Because for me, I like for me for me to, for me just my opinion and my personal like yeah yeah. For me, layers are more stylish. For sure. Yeah, I like layers because you can be more stylish. But you can even the, get like light layers. I I can't really be stylish with light la- like with like single layers. You know what I'm you saying? Know what you I gotta, really can't. You know what you gotta be on? What? You gotta be on that white t-shirt with the gray sweat shorts, on the in the gold chain. Uh, no, I, uh, and that shit just dangling. <laughs> what's dangling? <laughs> wait, 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 what's dangling? The, the, the chain. necklace? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Just every with every step. Why does it sound like? Why does it sound like the chain is like fucking taking steps? Because it's all the it sounds like a fucking horse. Because you wear multiple chains, so they're clinking against each other. Uh, so yeah, I but, think you're getting the wrong sound there. <laughs> but also with that, ladies and gentlemen, there's gonna be a lot of alcohol being consumed since the sun is out. So we want to make sure that you don't get hungover. Right? Yes. Right? right? Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Taste salut. There go, it is. Go get your taste salute, ladies and gentlemen. Use code IE Friends. It is uh, site wide. You can get anything off of there. You can get their cups. You can get their their merch. But most importantly, get the drinks, bro. The hydration you meet, uh, hydration immunities, immunities. I can't talk today. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna tell you 100. They work. Like I drink them. I say this every time on the pod whenever I bring them up because I literally do this religiously. Before I go out, I know I'm gonna get fucked up. I chug a bottle of taste salute, and then. I go about my day, get the hydration in me, and then when I get back home, I chug another bottle, and then the next morning I chug another another bottle. And what is a hangover? I don't know. Never heard of her. Never heard of her. So. Never heard of that one. Um, yeah, um, I use it religious. Like, that's not even like about like, the hangovers. It, no, it's not even. Just, like, I know, so I know much- this is an ad and all, but like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm being fucking serious. I use salute every fucking. Day. I'm not even kidding when I say that. I use it every fucking day. The flavors bro. are immaculate. Cause like. Besides me drinking water, right? I drink salute with my water all the time. 
and I eat it. I literally eat it with every meal I eat. Yeah, it's and a I, great soda. I'm literally at work and I'm drinking it, either the energy one or the hydration one. And um, even when like even, <laughs> even when my mixed drinks, when I create like when I'm like like when I'm gonna go out and about. Yeah, you put them in your drinks. I put them with my alcohol, and I use them as like my um my mixer. Yeah, yeah. That way, I don't have to use like soda or like juice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That has like all the sugar and shit. That causes hangovers, basically. Also, yeah. um, it's great, honestly. Yeah, Dude, the, the strawberry margarita hydration one with freaking vodka or even tequila. Bro, Crazy. honestly, I was like, yeah, this is hitting. Crazy. This is hitting, bro. I don't know what they're doing in that Salute Factory, but they making shit taste amazing. And it's so healthy for you. What is it? What, let me... I think the sugar percentage, there's 10 calories and uh, sugars, one... One gram of sugar, bro, which is amazing. 6% of sodium. Remember, that's 10 calories for the hydration one. It's only 5 calories for the energy ones. Yeah. 5 less, by the way. 400 so. uh, electrolytes, 250 milligrams of well. Think about this. Come on, yo. You can think about it. A can of Coke or Pepsi is like 150 calories. You can drink, what, 15 of those? Yeah. That's old. That you already overpassed your freaking yeah. high, your water intake for the day, definitely by 15 Bottles is, of water. This is an ad, but I want to let you guys know, we mean all everything we're saying. Yeah, like 100%. you are. If you want, if you even have the thought of trying it, go try it. Use code IE friends ten percent off. Because why not, bro? Everybody, whenever I see someone, whenever we go out, we got the packs on us, and we give them to someone. It's like, yo, these I, are great. How much packs did I have when we went to Hawaii? Like over fifteen. My, dude, literally, when I opened my suitcase, the dog was smuggling packs to Hawaii. <laughs> Who needs a cargo ship when you got Aaron? Oh my god, dude! I literally had like full on like freaking twenty sticks with me inside my suitcase, dude. TSA was like, "Yo." TSA was like, "What are these drugs?" Yeah, yeah what are are these drugs? I'm are like, these like, no. any drugs these kids are using? I'm like, Shh, they're drugs to me. I fucking need it. I need it. I need it. So, All right, yeah. let me get into a crazy story before we get into uh, take the mic. Go for it. Before we get into the other crazy stories that people tell. Bit, 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 bit. Have you ever heard the story of Delamar Vera? I have not. Okay, so strap in, my boy. Okay, I'm strapped. And I don't mean the strap on. Oh, God. I mean your seatbelt. I'll seat put that belt. away. Huh? I'll put that away. Yes, don't do that. Don't use it on me right now. Anyways, so Delamar, so let me get into the story of, so there is a couple, mm -hmm. Luz and Pedro Vera. Pedro Vera and Luz, um, I, see, I forgot her last name, but I see they're together. Oh. No, no, I forgot her last name. I think it's. But shout outs to lose. Anyways, um, they had two boys, right, already, and they all welcomed a, a third child, which right. was their first girl, right? Nice. So this is back in December 1997 in Philadelphia. Uh, Pedro and Luz were Puerto Rican. They, they had to come here from Puerto Rico in the 90s. Very important because they also came here with other family members, right? Mm -hmm. Anyways, one day while Pedro, he's a mechanic, is working on a car. Loses in the house. She uh she comes out. Next thing you know, they notice, boom, there's a fire. She scrambles into the house to get her two older sons out. They get out. She goes into the room where her 10-day-old, or it was very an infant child, was sleeping in her crib. Mm -hmm. and when she went to go in the room to try to get her, um, she wasn't there. The rooms, the whole house is on fire. The room's on fire. It's super hot. But her child's not in the crib. Okay. And while she's looking for her, uh, the the smoke starts building up more. She's literally she's starting to get burnt. Like the heat, like the heat's like literally like going off. So she can't do anything. She was looking for her daughter everywhere. Mm -hmm. Couldn't find her. Leaves the house. The firefighters show up and she says, "My daughter's in the house. They can't do anything." But of course, the whole house is just in flames, engulfed. Yeah. engulfed. Once the 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 smoke clears. They, uh, uh, she's telling like my, my daughter, like she wasn't there. She's still alive. Like she's not there. They tell her that there's you no, know, like, uh, since she was so small, since she was an infant still, she's probably just burnt and there's no, there's like no body, no, because no body was ever found by yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah. The body was never found. They're like, it probably just like disintegrated in the fire because like her body was so small. Yeah. There's no evidence left over, but Luz, her entire time was like, no, my daughter's alive. My daughter's alive. Never let it go. Um, her and Pedro had another son like years later. 
Um, but she was still insistent that her daughter was still out there and she would beg her family members and her and Pedro, her man, that to go help find her and then to the point where Pedro was like, dude, you got to let it go. Like it's the past. Like she's gone. Like it, there's nothing we can do about it. She's like, no, she's still out there somewhere. There's no way, you know, let's cut to six. This is December 1997. Let's cut to six years later in January 20, 2004. Mm-hmm. Luz. At this point, Luz is not with Pedro anymore. You know, they split up for whatever reason. Yeah. Luz goes to a birthday party in New Jersey. Okay. This is, of course, a family thing, whatever. She sees a little girl, six years old, with the same exact dimple that her daughter had and the same one that she has. And she looks exactly like her and her sons. What the? She's looking at this girl like, okay. What the fuck? She's like, that has to be her. That has to be her. Uh This has to be Delamar. So, but she just can't go up to her like, you're Delamar. You're my fucking daughter, blah, blah, blah. So what does she do? She fakes, basically goes up to her and fakes saying like, oh, hey, you have some gum stuck in your hair. Like, let me help you out. Right. And the girl lets her. Right. And what she's doing, basically, she gets strands of hair from her. Oh, to get like DNA. To get DNA testing. So she goes to a state representative, uh, Representative Cruz. Uh, she pleads her case with them. The reason why she can't open an investigation on this and she can't get a DNA testing is because the police closed this case years ago. Uh-huh. It's closed already. They can't open it again unless you get permission, right, from a district attorney. So she pleads with this district, uh, with the rep- state representative to open it up. She's 100% certain that it's her daughter. This and that because the daughter was the body was never found. And plus, when she went to go to the room to find her daughter, she wasn't there. She wasn't there. Uh, Cruz finally, like, you know, he ex, like, you know, caves in and accepts. So he calls the district attorney. The district attorney opens a case, gets the, gets the DNA tested. Turns out that little girl is Delamar Vera. What? At the party, this girl was Aaliyah, Aaliyah. six year old Aaliyah, that is uh, who turned out to be Delamar Vera. Let's track back. Yeah. So remember how I told you in the beginning, Pedro was working on a car. This car was from a distant cousin named Caroline Correa. Caroline Correa at that time was telling people that she was pregnant, but she really wasn't pregnant. She just happened to tell people she was pregnant for whatever fucking reason. What the hell? So that day, she did have car problems, and she took it to her distant cousin, Pedro, who, were like, they knew each other, but they're, like, distant cousins, you know? Like, they didn't really talk that much. And her and Luz, like, barely ever talked. They barely had any of her conversations together. Like, she knew Pedro, but she, like, didn't really know about, like, she knew Luz, but not, like, not like that, you know? Yeah. But she's Pedro's cousin. So, you know, she, and then she knows Pedro's a mechanic, so she asks him to work on her car. While she's there, she notices, you know, the newborn um, Delamar. And she's, like, you know, infatuated with her. And I'm guessing in that moment, she said, I have to have her. <laughs> so he, she snatched up so the baby. So basically, there's two different sides of the story where, of course, with the car being worked on, yeah. there's another different um, story. I mean, this is all fact and true, but there's a different story claimed saying that she went and visited them just to visit and this and that. She saw the newborn baby she and she's like, it. I need. And so what she did was one day while Pedro was at work and... um. While um, um, Luz was job hunting, uh-huh. she came back and she found, you know, um, um, what was it? Well, uh, Caroline. Yeah. You guys said her name was Caroline, right? Uh-huh. Caroline Carrera. Yeah. Caroline Carrera um, was at her house and he, she was like, what did you do? Like, oh, I forgot my purse from last time I visited. And she put the baby in the purse. Yeah. Um, and then you'd be like, oh, why did she leave her son? Like, well, her, her sons were in the house. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Her older sons. Um. But the story, I guess everyone actually goes with this one where though she was working on the car while Luz wasn't paying attention. Uh, Caroline snuck in back to the house, grabbed the baby. And since it's December in Philadelphia at the time in 1997, they had um, heaters in the house, like the, you know, like the portable ones, the yeah, heaters. Yeah. So what she did was she basically caught it into a curtain. And that's what caused the fire. Oh, so she started the fire. She started the fire and kidnapped her child. Oh, so she shit. snuck out with the baby. The fire happened. They were clueless. They snuck back. They went back into the house and the baby was gone. The baby yeah. was gone. Yeah, yeah. Six years, this woman lived with the thought that her daughter was still out there. No one believed her. Come to find out that 
her man's cousin stole stole and baby. started a fire in her house just to get the baby out of there just to have a baby and say look here's my baby what the hell for six years this girl that thought that caroline was her was her mom and she knew nothing about all of this and um but yeah comes to show like bro like you can't even trust your own family dude this crazy so that woman got charged with arson and of course kidnapping she got nine years minimum to 30 years maximum i can sources say that she's already out now what she's out keep yeah that's what i'm saying i'm like keep her to 30 20 that's fucking 20 crazy. 50 whatever that dude that's crazy. a crazy woman walking around that's dude crazy. and that's not even the first time she gets charged with arson by the way oh my god <laughs> That was like her second charge of arson. She had Gemini. Bro. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, now, like, at that time, you know, um, you know, her Luz the, um, and her daughter were reconnected. And um, now she's fully grown. She's, I think she's engaged now, which is totally cool. But, yeah, I'm like, how is it, like, you know, crazy how you could just, crazy that, you know, you grow up and you probably tell people, like, oh, yeah, you know, I was kidnapped. Yeah. I thought my mom was someone who wasn't really my mom. Oh, my God. Can you imagine, bro, that you're doing someone a favor because their their car's fucked up? She's breaks? better than me, bro. Like, if I was the mom and I saw like my daughter, like at this party, I would have started a ruckus. Like that girl was smart acting like that, where she's like, I know, but she couldn't because like people are like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah, you're dude. fucking crazy. Yeah, and then you're just uh, that's smart of her. Damn. The party, the birthday party, by the way, that was like at a birthday. It was in New Jersey, so literally a stop across state lines. That's smart as oh. Remember, she lived in Pen- yeah, Philadelphia, yeah. Pennsylvania. Just- the birthday party was in Willow, Willow, Williamboro, Willow, Willieboro, New Jersey. So yeah. literally just across the state line or whatever, across the river or whatever. Or however the geograph. So okay. basically it was right right there, dude. It's a bold ass cousin to invite the mom. No, no, no. So she didn't know. So Oh, she didn't know she was going to be there? No, she didn't know. Like she also got invited too. Caroline also got invited and she took her daughter. Oh. It was a kid's birthday party. It was like a family and thing. And it just happened poop right there. And then Luz happened to be Shit. there. Yeah. That is insane, bro. That, and this is real. This does not sound real. No, this it's so is a crazy. R- yeah, this is a real story. I think they made like a show or movie out of it. I think. I was gonna say it sounds like it should be. They made. I think they movie. made a show or movie out of it. I don't know the name of the show or movie, but I know this is a true story that actually happened. That is fucking crazy. And of course, like I said, there's two different sides of where, like she was there because she worked on the car, or she was visiting her cousin. And then she snatched her during that visit. And well, she came back to say, I left my purse. So she was, that's why she walked back out with the purse, but she had the baby inside the purse. That's crazy. Yeah. Keep an eye on your babies, bro. Bro. Crazy, right? Yeah. Holy shit. I want to see this movie. Bro. Like, and then you can see images. You just put up images like of the, of the people like, dude, like, it's no, no, I mean like in the. I actually the, want to see it too. I want to see them. It just no, no, yeah, yeah. So you can see Delamar as a baby, and then Delamar as a as an as a six year old, and then Delamar as a as an as a her like now as an adult. So yeah, dude, it's a crazy fucking story. How like someone just being, I guess, like I don't know, bro. It's weird. Why would you tell people you're pregnant when you're not? Exactly. It's weird, right? And then plus, like the family, like is she hiding the whole time where like no one sees her like belly? Well, everyone just assumed that she was a pregnant, and then like, well, she, you know, of course, nine months later, you got to be like, oh, I, well, here's my baby. You know what I'm saying? So I think she just did it because she. Yo, wanted. look at her IG. Yo, she kind of bad. What the fuck? <laughs> That's crazy. Even her bio says "lost baby, little lost girl." <laughs> I told you. Bro. What the fuck? She got an IG, dog. Yo, she's smart. She's well, she's a real person, bro. Look at her. She's cute. She's amazingly gorgeous. Look, that's a picture of her. I think she's engaged now. Yeah, she's engaged now. So what the shout out to her. I think she already got married thing. She already got married. I think you see the picture. Yeah, dude. Shout out to her, bro. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She's it sucks that woman. she had to go through that shit, bro. It sucks that she got kidnapped. That's why the fact that, that that woman literally almost killed two other kids, too, by the way. What? Oh, because of the fire. Yeah, bro. Her two other the two other sons, her her brothers. Hold on, ladies. So look gentlemen. up Caroline Correa. Slide in her DM. That's the person that kidnapped her. That's the co- the cousin of Pedro, uh, Vera. Um, yeah, bro, this is a crazy story. I'm surprised the story was never like bigger because that's a fucking crazy thing, dude. It's crazy, bro. Yeah. So that's a picture of I think Luz or mother and child or reunion. Caroline. This is the mom. That's the mom. Yeah, Luz. That's the mom. Yeah. So Caroline Correa. I think there's a mugshot of her somewhere. There should be a mugshot of her somewhere. So look up Car- Caroline Correa. Caroline. Ben, Caroline. Da, 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 da. What was her last name? Correa. No, no, no. It's a C. It's a C. It's a C. Correa. R E A. Yeah. Uh, mugshot. Put mugshot because it looks nothing. That looks like a famous. It looks person. like an actress. 
Yeah. Oh, this no, is the weird ass. That's not her. Put okay. Put Carol. Uh, maybe I'm putting. Did I did I fucking not say her name right? I'm gonna put Aaron Carvel mugshot. See what happens. That's funny. Hell Hold yeah, on. bro. Is that people named Aaron with the mugshot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> funny. Um, let's. See I might here. be able to find the info right here. It's on Sling. You can watch it on Sling. Oh, it's an actual movie? Yeah. Louis, Luce to find her baby daughter. Actual events. Carolyn. Carolyn Correa. Correa. There you go. I said, so I was saying Caroline. Sorry. It's yeah, Carolyn Correa. Yeah. Look her up. Sorry. So I'm a butcher name. It's not, yeah. it's not Caroline. It's Carolyn Correa. There's that weird ass hoe. All right. Boom. Mugshot right there with the blue sweater. This boom. One? Yep, right there. That's her mugshot when she got arrested for it. Uh. Yeah, there she is. So all the images, guys, will be right there. Don't worry. We're going to show you guys these images. I'm pretty sure you've already been putting them up here. Yeah. In your editing stage. Wow. Yeah. Dude. I'm no monster. A jailhouse interview with Delma's kidnapper. What do you mean you're no monster? <laughs> Bro, you're a monster. You literally fucking committed arson and stole a baby. An, a newborn, by the way. She, I think she was like 10 days old when this happened. I think, Tel, I think Delamar was like 10 days old when this happened. That's if insane. I remember correctly. Yeah, bro. This is... I did not know that was... That was the same year I was born and the same month I was born. Shit, it could have been you, bro. Me and her are the same age. She's just only like... She, I think she's like um 20 days older than me. What? Yeah. We're born in the same month of the same year. December 1997. Wow. I think I think I think she was born December fifth or December fourth, and then this happened December fifteenth. That that incident. Yeah, she does happen when she was like ten days old. That is insane. <laughs> Crazy story, right? Yeah, I didn't. I like how that's funny that her little her bio literally says little lost girl. Little lost girl. That's She's funny. owning that shit. Oh yeah. I, mean, I, I would do. It, that's but- a crazy childhood to have. Imagine meeting, going on a date. Oh, tell me about your childhood. Oh, you know. I imagine was so, imagine you're on a date and, and then the guy's like, tell me a crazy story about yourself. Oh, let me, let me dive into the uh, crazy life that I had. She's like, oh, don't worry. Here, we'll just have a movie night. Boop. See, that's about me. Imagine Wait. she's like, let's just, hey, you want to watch a movie? Yo. Like, she's in telling like, She's she like, let's watch a shit. movie. And then boom. And he's like, damn, it's crazy. She has, a, he has, a, she has the same name as you. I know, right? That's crazy, right? Like it's kind of uh, all he, these names are matching up. Isn't that your mom's name? Isn't your mom named Luz? Yeah. Wait, is this play about us? Have you seen that TikTok sound? <laughs> Bro, that's crazy, huh? That is wild. I've been I've been on a. Have you ever had an awkward first date conversation where like they tell you something like crazy as fuck? You're just like, yeah, I wasn't expecting this on the first date. Bro. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this one seems more like we're together type story. But I had okay. one where a girl told me. She was adopted or no, she was, she was, no, no, she was in foster care. And I was just like, oh shit, I've never been in that conversation before. Dude, honestly, it's sad. I'm not even going to like, you know, I'm not going to like single out anyone or anything. Like, I'm not like, but I'm just saying like, you'd be surprised, bro. Like, honestly, it makes me kind of sad, bro, that there's a lot of kids in foster care, bro. Like I know, like, you know, I work at a school, right? Yeah. There is more foster kids than I could have ever expected at my school. That I know because they're like, wow. they'll, they'll, they'll tell me in confidence or they'll just tell me or like the teachers will tell me like, oh, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, they're, they have a, a rough upbringing, this and that, blah, blah. And I'll be, it's more common than you think, bro, because you would just think you know, a lot of these kids, oh, you know, parents, yeah, blah, 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 maybe they, whatever. Right. No, a lot of these kids, bro, come to the foster care system, bro. And they jump from home to home. There's been a lot of kids that I would see. And like two months later, they'd be in a different home. So they wouldn't even be at the school anymore. They'd be at a different city or, or a different school, bro. That's- Bro, it's incredibly sad how much kids that have no actual, like, you know, birth parent, like, yeah, you know, yeah. no home, no actual home that they call home because they jump around a lot. You know what's crazy, bro? Because I've never, because I didn't think it was that common. I thought it was like, I, I see I was it like, on a like daily, one, dude. But yeah, with those kids, I try not to treat them any different. I try to treat them with the same, you know, yeah, you know, as every other kid, right? But I'm not gonna lie, I I do treat them the same, but then I also give them a little you bit give more. Give them a like, bigger slice of pizza. No, I just give them a little bit more like mm. gentle care. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they that that's traumatizing. The shit they got to be going through every day, and like, bro, like some of the stories I've heard, like like there's these four kids that all live together in the same foster care. So they and they, and it's, it's cute because they all call each other like all oh, brother and sister and stuff. You know, that's really cute. They're not blood related at yeah, all, but yeah. they all call each other brother and sister. Fuck. Um, but um. 
they were like, I remember this this year. I remember these four kids came, and all of them don't even look anything alike, but they're all brother and sisters through you know the foster care, and they all jump together. And then I remember they're telling me like, oh, that's my brother. I'm like, oh, you guys don't look anything alike or anything like that. And then it hit me right when I said, I was like, oh fuck, they're probably a foster. And then she tells me like, oh yeah, we're yeah we're just you know we're um. We're not actually brother and sisters, but but you know we're in the same you know we have the foster same foster home. parents. And I'm like, oh okay. I'm like, yeah, we you know this is like our seventh home, sixth home. I forgot what she said. And I was like, oh okay. And then um, fuck, dude. Yeah, so, yeah, that's just sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, fuck. She's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, this one seems like she's. I mean, you know, this home seems like we've been here probably the longest. But yeah, now we're here. And um, it's like so they can't really get too comfortable because you never know. Yeah, but no, like no, yeah, but we've been we've stuck together for a lot, so it's it's so this and that, and I'm like, damn, I'm like, fuck, bro, like, you know, it's crazy because I, I mean, I've I've do my bro. The, the thing is, I'm sorry to cut you. The thing I was gonna say too, my bad to cut you off. I was like, it's normal to them. Yeah, this is normal. Jumping for them. around is that's their normal. That's their norm. That is absolutely sad, bro. Yeah, that's why I've always said to myself, bro, like. Like, I have two kids now, bro, and I can't imagine them. Like, of course, like, besides, you know, like, I would want my family to take care of them if anything happened to me mm-hmm. or and her, their mom, right? If anything just happened to us. I don't, want, I don't want them going to any, like, foster care or anything. Yeah. The fact that, like, there's no one else for these kids, right, in their that own family. Just, like, they have to go to, like, people that are technically like strangers, strangers yeah, you know, yeah. technically, right? Well, I mean, they are strangers. Yeah, yeah. But, like, that, but shout out to them that want to take care of them. At least they're willing to step up, yeah, so yeah. step up, right? Um... But what's it called? Like, I've always said to my, I've always said, bro, like, I want to adopt someone. I've always said that. Like, I'm going to do it. Um, I know it sucks that it's expensive. Really? It is. I think it's expensive to adopt. I think it is. Especially, like, if you want, like, a think, especially if you want, like, a newborn baby. Like, if you want, like, a baby baby, it's pretty expensive, bro. Like, they make it, they make adopting expensive, bro. For whatever, I guess it's to like show that Don't you're. Don't you get like funds from the government though? Uh, if you're foster care, yes. They're not. Remember, they're not adopted. These kids aren't adopted. They're foster kids, mm. which is a sad term. Yeah. Yeah, I think they get help. They get money wise, because I mean, I mean, who wouldn't, bro? Imagine you're just trying to take on all these kids, but then that's the thing is like where you're like, hmm, I wonder if you're doing it for the kindness of your heart, or you're doing it because you're getting that funding. extra money, that funding you're yeah, getting, yeah. right? Um, who knows? We'll never know. Um. Every case is different, but I've always said I wanted to adopt because like, dude, like, I got, you just like, you want to just help a child. Dude, remember, kids are innocent. They didn't All choose. kids are, in, they didn't choose to come in the world, bro. Like, like, they didn't choose like, to have this lucky. life. Like, we're lucky to be like raised by two parents. We are very, yeah. like, I'm super grateful. Exactly. And very lucky to be, have both of my parents. They may not be together anymore, but I'm lucky that I was raised with two parents. Because imagine, it's just like, you just grow up just like that. That's just how you grew up. Like, that's how you- That's our norm. Like, their conversation would be like, wait, you don't bounce around from houses to houses? Why do I do that? Yeah. That that realization is is crazy. A lot of of those foster kids I have in my school, not just them for it's like, there's more than, there's more kids like that, bro, that that's their norm. And they know there's another norm of kids actually having two parents. That's- Sad. Like they don't have that, but everyone else does. Fuck. That's the that's the when you actually brothers. look at, when you actually look into that, bro. The fact that their norm is super different from someone else's norm that actually has two two like like blood parents, brothers, sisters, cousins. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the crazy shit because that's something you don't think about every. That's something you don't think about, but that's something someone's living through every day, and it can be like your classmate that you have no idea unless they tell you. Yeah, cause I, I the school knows, the office knows, the principal knows, the, and I think the teachers would know. Yeah, I think they have they have that info. I think not. I think maybe not teachers, but it is on record that you know, oh, like, cause they have to know who your guardian is and this and that, yeah, and then, yeah. you know, what are you relating? And so they know, right? They know who 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 is who. So yeah, bro, like, um, it's it's crazy how much kids have found out are you know in the system, bro, especially at our school too, and I'm just like like. I try just to be a little bit more sympathetic towards them um, because like, yeah, bro, like it's tough. That's a tough it's world. A, it's a tough world out there, bro. It's a very, very sad world when you really look into more things, man. Mm-hmm. That's why, I mean, some people tend to just care for their own world, which, you know what? I mean, you can't, you can't blame them for that, right? Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, everyone's just trying to live, right? Everyone's trying, just trying just to get by, trying to get by, be happy, you know, but 
sometimes you just got to take a step back and just be like, dude, some other people just have it worse than you. Like, you may have it worse, right? You may have it bad. Things probably not going your way. But you truly got, sometimes you got to just step back and just be thankful for the things, the little things you do have. Because there's someone out there, bro. Who wants what you have. Who probably wants the little, the little that you have, someone wants it. Because they have it way worse than you have it. Way worse, bro. Changes your perspective on it. Like, no one's saying that your problems aren't problems and they, you know, it doesn't suck, right? But. Just be, be grateful. grateful for what the be little things you have. Be grateful for the problems you have too. It's just like I'm certain glad. problems, yeah, yeah certain like, problems, yeah, yeah, certain problems. It's yeah. like damn, like it's like that's the only problem you have to my deal with. My problem is that there's no soda for my dinner. That's crazy, bro. Okay, <laughs> that is super you first world me? problems. You get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I get you. Yeah, but just just, just be thankful for the little things you do have because there's someone out there that just wishes that little thing that you have. They they want that. They for want sure. it, bro. Oh my god, damn, bro, that's why you. Shout out to any uh, foster kids listening to us. We are your brothers. We are not only are we friends, but we are brothers. I hope we can look. You can look to us as your older brothers that yeah, are just yeah. here to you know make you laugh and just make you but feel. If like... you're a big booty Latina, maybe I won't be your brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> maybe I'll be your husband. I don't know. Like, oh hit me up. <laughs> no, yeah. Just shout out to any any people out there that adopt kids yeah, for 100%. just the love that you want to give to a child, an innocent child that just deserves love because every child deserves love, dude. Every child deserves love. I'm a, as much as I say fuck them kids, bro, I love kids. Like, I love playing with kids. Well, because right now you're at the stage of like, you mean fuck them kids as in, I don't want kids. Yeah, I don't want kids. But you're not, you don't just go up to some random kid or and like, push them. Push them, like, fuck them kids. Yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. You, I like playing tag. Your aspect of fuck them kids is right now is like, I don't want babies. Yeah, it's my, it's fuck me having kids. Yeah, but, that's what I mean. But kids in general, you're like, oh, kids are awesome, bro. Yeah, they are. No, they're, kids, they're, they're the only me, ones that don't judge me. You get me? Like, if I want to play tag, they're going to play tag with me. Yeah. Like, if I say, hey, you want to play a game? They're going to say, yeah. Kids are, it's funny because kids are the most unjudgmental, but also judgmental people. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's, it's, it, it, there's no happy balance with kids. It's so funny, bro. I've learned that we're working with kids. And um, no, yeah, bro. That's why when I hear any stories of kids, when it comes to like anything that's like very like just sad or like just despicable <laughs> yeah it it's like dear to you it's geared to me because i have two kids mm-hmm. and then i work with kids mm-hmm. so like i'm just like oh, fuck dude i just i could never imagine anything happening to the like my own children and then to kids it's that i work kids. with because like yeah sometimes i can go into work i'm like fuck i gotta, I gotta deal with these children because sometimes yeah it could be it's some, be a some lot. days it could be a lot where they're just super crazy or they're not listening or whatever right but then other days where there's those moments where they just like make you laugh or they say something super nice and you're just like, bro, like warms you up. I'm just like, there's a reason why I still work here, bro. Like, that's why I told you, like, even if like, let's just say like all this, right. Yeah. Goes even bigger. And we're actually making a good, like a very, very comfortable. Like wage. Wage. You're living off of it. I don't know if I'd be, I'd you have can't drop the, the balls kids. to drop the kids, to be honest with you. That's good. I like, I know it sounds crazy. No, nah, but I mean, that's, that's like something. Like your purpose, you can say like you want to help the kids. Yeah, bro. Because the moment when these kids come to me and they tell me all these little nice things and like the kids want to come up to me and hug me, like the little ki- like the little kindergartners, first graders, whatever. Like they just come up to me randomly, hug me, and they say like 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 yay, like oh look, it's coach. This and that, blah blah blah. I like it. It warms me up, bro. Mm-hmm. Like especially when I know when it's some of the kids that like don't have yeah. that love at home from like you know blood parents or like just whatever uh-huh. and they come to me for comfort bro it just it hits you know i felt it that hits. i felt that one day i was doing a one summer i was doing um uh what's the word oh, fuck i'm losing and in, in, not an internship i was volunteering to be a, a coach i was i was a coach for displaced americans and low come america no no displaced immigrants and low come uh americans mm-hmm. so every saturday i go i'll be a soccer coach for this program uh the tia foundation if you guys want that's to dope check bro them that's out. dope and i remember it was these kids i think they're like seven seven to like 12 years old and uh i was their new soccer coach and um they were like doing the normal things and uh, they had a goalkeeper who was, he was probably like nine or 10, but he was a straight ass. Like this dude was, he's a little kid, but he was straight ass. But I told him, I was like, yo, we're going to, cause they had a tournament coming up. And I was like, yo, we're going to win this tournament. I don't care. We're going to win the tournament. So I started focusing more on the goalkeeper. I was like, this is how you got to do it. This is what you got to do when the ball comes. You got to put your knee down so it doesn't go under your legs and stuff like that. So I was teaching them doing that. And then I was kind of practicing like giving goals with them. 
And then um, they had that tournament. I couldn't make it to the tournament because of school. But um, I went the following week and they all came running to me all happy. Like, coach, coach, we won, we won. And then the goalkeeper was like, yeah, I did the thing and I blocked it. And I was like, bro, I felt so good. I was like, I like this. And But uh, yeah, I wanted to continue. But- it's that. It's that very like satisfying um, feeling of like your advice to a young a young person. You're um, like it, it goes it a long worked. way. It went a long way, and they actually yeah. worked. And they come and tell Made you an like impact. I like I oh I did what you told me or like hey man I, those advice you gave me or the, oh the skill set you gave me or whatever like it mm-hmm. worked I did it and they're they're and they're so happy that something like they got like a W or something like a yeah, like yeah. a win or whatever like whatever case win in life or win in whatever. Um, it's just a super satisfying feeling that like that you helped someone. You know what's gonna be crazy about your position as well? I don't know if you've thought about this, but looking back at all the all the teachers and mentors, you can remember the ones that made an impact in your life. Yeah. So maybe maybe there's a kid right now who maybe doesn't express it, but like in twenty years. He's gonna be thinking about you randomly. I wonder how Coach Aaron is doing. No, honestly, I've had that thought before. I'm like, yeah. I wonder if I've ever made an impact for sure. Where like kids will like rem- remember me like in five, ten, fifteen years, yeah, right? Yeah. Where like I'm not expecting it to happen, but like I'm hoping that I'm making a a big enough impact mm-hmm. where I'm that role model in whoever's kids' life. I know I can't be a role model on every kid's yeah, single yeah, but life, but at least you're changing. But in life. someone's life, that I can change, especially when it comes to kids that are you know having the struggle at this early age because i've always said like bro like kids should not be have to struggle right mm-hmm. whether they're struggling in school like or they're struggling it shouldn't be anything thing. mental it shouldn't be anything they're struggling with when it comes to like something that's not out of their reach yeah yeah when it comes to something that's out of their reach they should not struggle yeah like I, sadly kids, life is kids shouldn't be depressed that's sadly so life sad. is super unfair so i know i don't think it was something that's never going to change which is yeah. sad but I still have that thought of like kids should never have to struggle. That's something that's out of the reach. If this comes to school and they don't have a learning disability, right? Because you know, there's learning disability, so they've struggled, they struggle. That's sad. Like hopefully they, you know, they have programs to work on that. Yeah. But whatever they whatever they can handle, you know, that's their own struggles and they need they they you know it builds character and they they learn how to, you know, fight those struggles. But if it's and, not their fault. But if it's something that's just out of their reach, you know, I like the kids should not struggle. Yeah. You know, but sadly this is just it's a cold world, world we live, live in. in. And that's something that sadly comes from the stem of ignorant and just heartless peep older adults. Selfish. Selfish. And then honestly, I can't even say that that's 100% fact. Because sometimes it happens for just sadly, you know, some, um, not not disasters, but like what we call it. Um, um, just, I guess, bad, terrible luck that happened to their actual parents where, you know, they yeah. pass away or whatever. Yeah. So I can't say it's like ignorant always ignorant parents or ignorant adults it's just, it's, it's, sometimes it's, like in incon- like no nah, that's a very it's, inconvenience it's, like it's, it's a, a bigger word for it i know there's a word for i'm oh, i fucking hate that yeah. i don't know the english language that much <laughs> um I'm but yeah fog, you know what i mean like man. it's like sometimes you know their parents pass away and there's no one else in their lives that can take care of them so they have to go into like these you know what i'm saying yeah 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 so stuff like that I guess out of their out of their reach bro like out of their like you know that's nothing they can ever control mm-hmm. so yeah well we uh well, we gotta stand this, for the kids man yeah stand for the kids and uh, compliment the kids. Also, love you see a kid. Compliment compliments goes a long way. Compliments bro. go a long way. Compliment T- the kids. Trust me when they say that. Compliments go a long way. Yeah. Even if you like, dude, when kids say, hey, look at this. Dude, just look. Yeah, just look just at it. Just give them that attention, bro. Like every time a kid tells me like, hey, look at this. And I know it's probably going to be something super simple or whatever. I'm still going to look. Yeah. And when they do it, I'm be like, damn, that's really cool. I, and I always be like, like yeah. I can't even do that. Yeah, like, yeah. I, dude, like, bro, just give them the, give them the props that... Like that they're looking for. Don't man. kill their dreams early yeah, on, dude, bro. Don't, don't kill do their dreams. Yeah, bro. Don't do that. All right, well, let's get into it. A- with that, we're going to get into Take the Mic. If you guys don't know what Take the Mic is, it's another segment we have here where we involve you guys, you know? Let us know all your crazy anonymous stories, anything you want to get off your chest. We're here to read them all. So uh, link in the bio under Take the Mic. First one, some cheese, man. Ooh. I had seen from when I worked at a pizzeria back in 2020. I've heard of pizzerias and pizza space, man. Oh, hell yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I had coworkers that were both delivery drivers. Turns out they were hooking up with each other mm. and the girl was married with a kid. Oh, no. Turns out her husband was catching on what was going on and came into the restaurant and started screaming, where this other guy? They had to call the police and both of them got fired, leaving me as the only delivery driver. <laughs> you know what's crazy, bro? 
I like. Wait, I wonder. He, I like how the emoji is an emoji of us of like a crying face. But I'm like, why are you sad? I was like, more tips, baby. Right. More tips. But longer days. You know oh, what's that is sad, true. bro? Fuck. Um, people like for some reason this past week I've seen a lot of like cheaters getting killed. Like one thing, like I think what people forget about, and I know I, I'd be joking around, I'd be fucking around a lot. I don't do it anymore, but don't get with the married person. Cause they will kill you, bro. There's a lot of emotions behind. They it, will dude. kill you. Sure, I dude. I saw. Unfortunately, I fucking hate how this shit shows up on my fucking Twitter feed. I saw this video of um this girl. She was cheating on her husband, and this was recorded on her like fucking security camera. And the husband comes to the room and tries stabbing the guy, like the like the dude she's cheating with. He stabs him one time on the like in the stomach. But then that dude ends up escaping, so he just killed the uh, killed his wife, and that was. And then I saw another case of something similar, where they just uh oh this one this one was recent I don't know how recent it was but uh this was kind of going viral a little bit this past month it was like this gentleman he had a not a gentleman fuck <gasps> I've like seen that, that video shotgun one yeah and he the wife is literally recording him and recording he still it. fucking kills her yeah 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 and so it turns I remember that they they interviewed the the daughter. And she said that basically, she said that at that moment, both my parents died that day because she yeah. said that her, her dad's dead to him. Yeah. Comes to find out, I mean, I'm not saying what he did was valid. It's not, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But the woman was not innocent. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was, no, it was, she's innocent because she got killed. Like, yeah, yeah, she should have never gotten cheating. killed. She should have never gotten killed. But she was cheating. Yeah, yeah. So it turns out she, she was cheating on him for many years or whatever, however long. But she was also taking his money and giving it to the other dude. She was extorting money from this guy, like like a, a lot of money, and right. take, giving it to the other dude, basically. Wow. So he acted out on, uh, but I, the dude's actions. Yeah, yeah, it's not justifiable. It's not justifiable at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. But so stop, stop fucking around with like people who are in, engaged, people who are married, because they will kill you. Like yeah, that's like, a they, they shouldn't be killing you. They married you. You're the love of the life. You're the love of their life. Of course they want to kill you. Yeah, I mean, well, not not of course, but like, yeah, yeah, it's there. The thought. But just is there. know that. Just know that. And why are you gonna die? The, over the mind, someone's mind, when they go through something like that, when they find out, it's most, blurred. Remember, not they everyone's gonna do it. But remember, you never know who you're fucking, who the other person that they're with, you're fucking with. You don't know. You don't know who you're fucking with. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, you don't know who's actually gonna be like fucking going insane after they find out that you, you know. And you're a target now. Yeah. You and then the wife or the husband is a target now. So it's like, dude, just don't do it. Like, of course, none of like, no one, everyone, and someone getting killed over cheating, that's not justifiable it's not whatsoever. Justifiable. It's not. Like, it don't matter if you found someone cheating. You just, you have just to just leave, bro. leave. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. We don't know who but you're fucking with. But it's the ego, bro. It's These that. Motherfuckers. People's like, just their fucking, their mental, they just, they like, they're not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying their mental, I'm saying, but their mentality, it just like breaks yeah because some people like that meant a lot that means so that was their life much. that was their life so stop fucking around with don't be a cheater don't be a home yeah, wrecker don't be a home wrecker, wrecked. Dude. next one so for the love of god please say your words correctly supposedly <laughs> not supposedly <laughs> it's back it's that we i feel like this was like a this was also like a while back where you got it was a take a mic where someone said the same exact thing. They called you out on this. And they say it's also aura. No, they also say aura is pronounced aura, not aurora. LMAO. I love Brody. I love Brody. I, I like saying funny. supposedly. I know supposedly, but that's just not me. It's just that it's just not me. It's just that freaking what do you call it? Like Mexican American yeah, type, yeah. like like you know, dialect, I guess. I'm sorry, bro. That's that Chicano in me, dog. <laughs> That's it's because also probably because I say probably I'm traumatized by the word probably. I remember one fucking white kid in. We, fourth we couldn't grade. even say Catholic, Catholicism. Yeah, we even oh, say it's that Catholicism. Word. Catholicism. 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 I think I probably still said it wrong, but whatever. Yeah, we couldn't even say that earlier. Hey, I'm no fucking doctor, Doug. The <laughs> fuck? I'm no doctor of English. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's funny. Hi, friends. This isn't a concern. Just curious. My boyfriend and I have been together for five years, and every time we have every time we have sex, he looks at me. Not just in my eyes, but like looks at me, looks at me. I know he watches and waits for me to finish before we change positions, but I'm get, but I'm get all in my head. That's what it says. I get all in my but head. But I'm get all in my head. I think she's saying that she gets, she get, I get all in my head. Yeah. 
it might be a green flag, but I get all self-conscious thinking I look crazy or something, LOL. Is that something you guys do? Is it common? Hold on, someone's sure getting in the door, right? Someone knocked, I think, yeah. Who did, I not even heard. They knocked like once. Yeah. Is it your brother, your mom? What? What? Oh, shit. What's up, dude? Surprise, surprise, sir. We just got done crying right now. Yeah, dude, we're going. Well, well, I mean, almost. I almost. I, I, I stopped it. <laughs> yeah, we're still filming. Yeah, I'm take the mic right now. All right, All right for sure. You want to hop in or you want to just chill? Let's chill. Okay. okay. For sure. right. you, can, you can hop in the green chair if anything, bro. I'll just pause. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Is he gripping your shit? <laughs> I like how he actually went through his pants, too. <laughs> he could have just faked it from yeah, the outside, right? but he went but through he went his in the pants. pants. <laughs> All right, All so right. going back, so um, so she is it common to look? Okay, so what's the question? Bro, literally, I I I, I love, love eye contact. I'm I gonna lie to you, bro. You know, there's a statistic that's that gonna make you hurt, feel better. That shit turns me on, bro. I think they surveyed. Uh, uh, I forgot. I think I forgot how many people they surveyed, but um, they asked, and I'm gonna ask you: When you're watching porn, what are you looking at? Are you looking at her face, her titties, her body, her ass, or are you closing your eyes? What are you looking at? Oh, I look when you when you watching porn. I'm, I look at her. Like I look at her face. Her. You look at her face. I look at her face. I like the seeing faces, the face the, of the moan. That's just oh, okay. So yeah, hot. that's also hot as fuck too. That's yeah, hot. Yeah. No. So like, dude, one thing that turns me on like during sex, bro, is like, literally when you're when you're having sex with her, when you're, you're in her, right? You're when you look straight in her eyes. I literally be like, look at me. That's like, why I take their soul. They're just like, and they look at me and they're like moaning, bro. And I'm just like, oh my god, bro. Put your hand on their neck, oh, bro. I'm tell- Eye contact. <laughs> oh, come on, dog. Oh, we got. We went from crying to horny. I know, real quick, bro. I love it. Dude. So it's 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 like it's like that. You know how we always say yeah. like we love it. Like you know if they're giving you oral and they yeah, look yeah. up at you. Like they say you know when same, they're, same they're on thing. It and they look up like bro. Same thing. Oh, you you are in a great position, Miss. He loves like me, you. bro. Like if I'm you know eating her like i'm giving her oral and oh, i'm like looking, looking and i'm like, looking at her oh my god bro. I, do I, little I love that she has her head on me bro and i'm just like there i'm looking peek-a-boo. up at her i'm like oh bro i love looking at her oh my god <laughs> i'm horny sorry hey guys i need your guys opinion maybe aaron will understand a bit more i'm 23 and my boyfriend of a year and my boyfriend of a year is 25 he has six year old daughter who i have been became really close to Not but cool. none of my family knows of her yet oh We've had this conversation before, how keeping his daughter a secret is terrible. Mm-hmm. Our relationship is great. We all get along very well, and there hasn't been any baby mama drama, which is something I was really worried about. His daughter only stays with him every other week. My boyfriend and I only see each other on weekends due to distance, and that's when I see her. My parents are very Mexican, and we're worried about what they'll think about his daughter because I know it's not something they had envisioned for my future. My question is, how do you guys think we should bring this conversation up to them? Especially it being a year into our relationship. Thank you. I feel like you could have brought that up a while back or like no, no, yourself. Like, yeah, like she could have brought it up to him. Because if she, they ever asked like, oh, how's blah, blah, blah. And like, oh, yeah. we Or like, oh, like whenever they ask like, oh, what'd you guys do or whatever. So I hung out with the We like hung out with him and his daughter or whatever. Yeah, he has a daughter. She he has a daughter. So like we did yeah. this. It's, not- it's definitely a tough, uh, a tough conversation because you, you know, the whole Mexican parent thing. I think it's just like, but. Uh, uh, I think about who it. Are they, who are they to fucking judge? Because people just love to judge, and you you know, like you know, you just judge. Literally had it unzipped and everything, <laughs> but you know, because um, you know, judging like because how the people's perceptions and judging it just it alters your decisions a bit. I and get it, bro. But over a year, you're already there for a year. You like you really like the guy. You're close with the daughter you now. Face. Something you gotta face is like unless if this is really gonna bother you, and you got I think when you say this conversation, you have to stand on business and you gotta be assertive. Yeah. Be like, yes, he has a kid. So what? Like, don't be like, oh, I don't know, because they're just, the first thing they're gonna try to do is convince you out of it. Yeah, that's why you gotta stand on business. And you gotta be assertive. Mija. Be like, I know, qué? like this how this how it like, is. Dude, like this is how it is. Like stand I really business. like the guy. He happens to have a daughter. Like I don't know what to tell. You. Like it's that's the situation. And it's like, and you know what? And then you tell him it's not even a situation. Mm-hmm. Like this is just what the relationship is. Like, and you know what? There has been no baby mama drama. Um, the daughter is super nice to me. She treats me right. I treat her right. There's there should be no problems. Like I don't know why. I'm like if I really like the guy. Or love them. I don't know. If she, I don't know how where they're at right now. But then you guys should be able to accept it too. Yeah. Like I'm not asking you guys to be grandparents to the girl, 
but just know that yeah he has a daughter like and i could I, like you said it's right yeah it could be a hard conversation especially because you have not mentioned anything about her which i think that was the first kind of mistake but i mean when do you like i guess that i feel like <sighs> once you guys start getting like serious which was i'm pretty sure like a couple months back yeah you could have mentioned something yeah it's kind of hard because like let's say if i'm talking to a girl with um i mean instagram's there right so usually they post their kids yeah you could be like oh send me a photo <sighs> like oh here's yeah. you know here's a photo of you know and then like, oh yeah, he has a daughter, you know, this and that, you know, that's also easy way to do it when like you mentioned like, oh yeah, I'm talking to somebody, oh hey, uh, like, who's that? I have a boyfriend now or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, like, especially because like girl, tell me, I'm telling you this right now, that daughter, of course, is going to be in his life, like in his entire life. So like he's, that's a big part of his life. So just know that that's never going to go away. Yeah. So yeah. So just I'd be say assertive. you definitely have to tell him like anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, I like asking you guys for advice because you guys validate my Delulu. <laughs> Hell That's yeah. it. Fuck yeah. That's it. With the heart. Something, All right. Something about Ooh. me is I'm also Delulu. Delulu. I just want to know, is cheating during the talking stage a thing? I'm talking to a guy who I think makes it feel it's serious and like we're both on the same page. Relationship without the title type of thing. But yet I heard he's still clapping his baby mama cheeks, but we're not dating. Is it cheating? It's, it's, well, remember, 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 my talking stage and your talking stage were two different things. I said it was talking stage and then dating. You said it was dating and then talking stage. A situation. So that's the yeah. difference. It depends on how you look at it. A situation ship is only a situation ship to one person. Remember that. I'd say, yeah, this ain't a good look. This ain't a good look, bro. Yeah. This is not a good look. You're you're giving him that you're, motherfucker. Should you're not giving be, him the best of both worlds. Yeah, why would it like your baby? He's a she's a baby mama for a reason, and she's not. That's not his girl. That's not his wife. That's a baby mama, which means they're not together. So there should be no reason why he should be still be clapping her cheeks. Yeah. So that's not a good sign at all. I've been sober for more than a month, and I have been constantly going to the gym for a month now. Good job. Clap it up for good you, job. bro. That's what's up, dog. Good job. I hope you continue it and it goes super good for you. You got this. Don't quit. You're the you're the person. You are the you're that person. You are that person. Favorite song at the moment. Mm. <sighs> Favorite song at the moment. Um, I'm trying to think of the songs I listen to at the gym. I'm pulling up my phone. Um, I think it'd be between the songs that are like kind of like put me into the gym when I'm like lifting weights. Runaway by Kanye or Chambea by Bad Bunny or still, bro, dude, that shit pumps me up at the gym, bro. I don't know why. Or Family Ties by Kendrick and Baby Keem. Those are my three favorite songs right now at the moment because I mainly because you know I go to the gym a lot. I mean, uh, so like those are the three main songs I always play while I'm at the gym. Always. My three main songs right now, probably. Do 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 do. I'd say Luna. Okay. By Fade. Waikiki was my favorite for a minute, but I think I overplayed it. So I haven't played it. Bro, we play that you play that thing every Waikiki, time in Hawaii. Why, like every time we got into like the, the, the the Jeep, you like yeah, played yeah. it. We we played Waikiki and Ocean, Ocean Man, Man on repeat. Fuck Ocean yeah. Man. Ocean Man. Grab me by the hand doing things. Alright, so that one, under the influence, Chris Brown. And excessos for Sarrejida. Okay. That's my I shit. Like right that. That's I like that. I like that. That's my shit. That's my shit. Yeah, I think uh, right now when I can think of the top of my head, those are my three favorite songs right now because I listen to them. Like, that's, those songs are definitely getting played while, while I go to the gym. For that's sure. my shower songs, especially yeah. like Under the Influence. Start fucking dry humping in the shower. Recently, <sighs> my ex has been seen around where I live. He even went to my mom's job twice. Ever since then, I started to become paranoid wherever I go outside. And it's just weird and creepy because we ended things four or five years ago. What the and All I know fuck? is that he struggles with mental health. What do I do? Um, Wish for the best? Get a restraining order, maybe? I mean, you can't get a restraining order just yet. We're, you just got to... I mean, I don't know how easy it is twice. to get a restraining order or something. I don't know if you need like an actual cause to get one. Maybe you should report it first. Start with that. Yeah, start. Yeah, report it. Get yeah, one of your like weird. buff homies to like in, to like interrogate that oh, motherfucker. Okay, you know that's don't, how I don't get yourself. Don't get yourself a case. That's how I rock. I'm hella buff homies. I got. Got homies. <laughs> he did the. He did the. Uh. Ocean man. Ocean man. All right. Let's see this dilemma. Hey friends, hope you are having a beautiful day. 
I'm in a bit of a dilemma. Would mm. it be wrong if I don't tell my boyfriend I'm not a virgin anymore? Here's the backstory. He and I dated back in high school. I was a freshman. He was a senior. Oh, LOL. Jesus. I know, I know. We were together for six years before we decided to part ways due to growing apart and wanting uh, different things in life. He and I worked on ourselves. Meanwhile, we were broken up and did our own thing. I talked to many guys and dated many guys. I ended up getting into an extremely toxic relationship. That was an on and off thing. I lost my virginity in that toxic relationship. I then dated someone new who I thought was going to form into something serious, who also had sex and ended up turning into nothing because he just there for fun and games. Fast forward to today, the six year, the six year boyfriend and I recently got back together and I've developed a mature relationship. He is still virgin, which shook me because I thought he would have dated other women. And I, it honestly wasn't on my radar that the six year boyfriend and I would get back together. It's something that just naturally happened. Kind of like that red string theory. Is it something worth bringing up to him? If so, how would I tell him? He's a really nice guy and hurting his feelings is the last thing I want because I know he is my person. Thanks, guys. Love you. I mean, if it's not important to him, why bring it up? Don't bring it up unless he asks. And if he asks, be like, the fuck? Not my fault. You're a dweeb, you know? Okay, let's... It's a nice guy. Come on, my man. Bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> why, are you, why are you flaming the man my when bad, he's, my bad. he has not done anything wrong in his story? Not like... like the, the, this this is it's a secret code us men know is don't ask about her body count don't ask about her sexual past why the fuck would we know so i don't think that guy i don't think he's gonna ask you so uh you don't have to bring it up yeah if it, just, if it doesn't bother him or if it doesn't worry him worry him at all there's no reason to bring it up regardless like what is, like i'm it? pretty sure at this point he should know like i'm pretty sure she's probably had sex it's been yeah. years since we got back together what is that information going to do with with him? like what, what is it what is that information going to do for him yeah the only information it's going to the only thing it's going to do for him is create ammunition to be toxic I don't. It doesn't seem like he's toxic, though. I know, but that's why would yeah. he know? That, like the only reason he would I feel use like that this information is, is to be her toxic. her more than him. Exactly. I think unless like she didn't, she like they forgot to mention that like that he's like oh like hopefully you're still a virgin or something, you know? Yeah. Unless and that's weird. Then that's weird. That. Yeah, yeah. I would just tell him like, well, yeah, I'm not a virgin anymore. Like we have not been together for years. You thought I was gonna stay a virgin this whole time? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like stuff happens, bro. Like life happens. So like. Yeah, it's kind of rare for it's rare that he's still a virgin, which I mean, hey, that's his choice, you know, why not? Fucking dweeb. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Honestly, he has like the golden chalice, the golden cup right now though. But you guys haven't had sex? Well, cuz they just got back together. But like fucking take his virginity, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm well, see, it, seems like, it seems like it you? bothers her more than it does to him. Like it seems like if he's not even asking, he doesn't care. Yeah, you're fine. There's no reason why to mention it. I think she But if he just guilty. asks out of curiosity cuz you guys have been like cuz if like if you found out he's still a virgin, what if he was like, "Oh, what about you?" Yeah. Then you'd be like, "Oh, you know, I've, yeah, I've had sex." Yeah, I think you just feel guilty. It's fine, girl. Like just Unless he asks you out of curiosity cuz he mentioned that he's still a virgin and yeah. you bring it up, then tell okay, just tell 10. him. What? What? Seems like she only fucked twice. My bad, my bad. Well, not twice. Two times ever, but like two partners. That's what you think. That's what she wrote. Too many. That's what she wrote. Do you said two too many? Two oh too many. Oh my goodness. Uh, hi friends. Love you guys. Very proud of all of you. I'm a Werita Latina hey. and I have hyperpigmentation in some areas of my body, which makes me self-conscious to wear sort of clothing. Clothing. My question is, do you guys make it a big deal about what the cat what the pussy color a girl has? Um no. so you're gonna have to uh, remind me what oh hyper pigmentation so there's some parts of her that's yeah, darker yeah, yeah. than oh get the best of birth get the best of both worlds you get the best have you seen that Kim Peele skit worlds. there's a Kim Peele skit where um he's dating a a white girl well with, with a black pussy <laughs> and he's just in the I do <laughs> not remember that skit and it was the he said it was the best best part of his life like it's just that's a joke, but yeah. Um, nah, I think Girl, just, unless he's gay. Yeah, if he's bro, if he's gay, you're gonna the find fuck? A, you're gonna find a guy gay or racist. <laughs> you're gonna just find a man who does not care about that, which should be any guy. But I guess yeah. there's some dudes. Who I'm gonna like, tell you right now, guys, their penis colors are kind of different shades. Yeah, bro, you'd be surprised. Is yours a different shade? Um, <laughs> the, is yours a different shade? <laughs> What? Or is it just me? I mean, I feel like it's Am I the only one that's same color, but yeah. So, so look, m m my dick is like a little, I'd say a little bit, I'd say a little bit more tanner than my fucking face. Can I yeah. bring out the color wheel and you show me which one it is? What? <laughs> Why the fuck do you know one? Do we, what do you want to Let me bring out a color, color wheel. Tell me, hold on. But hold I feel on. like, yeah, most dudes, they're, for some reason, their dick color is a little bit more like 
a little darker than their actual skin color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Most same cases, shit, like, yeah. Right? My shit black. Yeah, my shit look tan. I'm like, <laughs> my shit look like, I'm like, how the, when the fuck did you go tanning? Exactly. That's like actually like, a, it has like a nice color or something, I would say. Well, I'm like, why can't my face be that color? You get me? Yeah. Like my shit white as fuck. I want some type of fucking, you know, color to it. I'm bright as shit. Uh, I got a color wheel right here. Oh, God. Uh, what? No, Big not Texas. yellow, motherfucker. Big what? Oh no, no! I mean the the tip is pink for sure. I think yeah, I think that's considered pink. There's a color wheel. It's like reddish pink or something what like that. Want? I forgot what color. Let me see. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll show kidding, you. But if you're not, nah, motherfucker, you, you nah, whatever. Okay, whatever. Nah, it's fine. Anyways, go. girl, it shouldn't matter. Um, you know that's just that's your body. It is just um, as long as you feel beautiful and you feel confident in your own skin. That's all that matters. Date men. And don't then, date little yeah, boys. Yeah, date men, not little boys. Fuck that shit. So don't be mad. Hey, if your pussy's darker, who cares? Yeah, hell yeah. Love that shit. Uh, oh, shit. It's nice. That's not. If your vagina's darker, <laughs> I, I, I feel like sometimes saying the word pussy is just so like. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. It just sounds like very, very, very like strong. Pussy. Yeah. Like, yeah. The pussy like, yeah, belongs bring to me. that. No, I'm not gonna say it. Right, hi guys. I have something I need advice on. I've been with my boyfriend for several months and I don't feel that crazy and love feeling. I know that love is in the actions, how he shows up, etc. And he does do those things and treats me so well. I care about him, but to what point will I have to walk away because I don't have that fiery feeling? I've communicated this with him and we have taken breaks to soar out of our feelings. And each time I cry so much. Has anyone been through this? Love the podcast, Yellow Heart. My boyfriend several months and I don't feel that crazy and love feeling. I know that I love that things. You know, he shows up, kind of has these things and treats me so well. I don't care about him. Well, damn. Yeah, I don't think he's the one. I think. Or maybe just give it a little bit more time to see that comes in. Because how long they have? How long have they been together for? See, I've never been in love, so I, I it's hard for me to give advice on this. I've never fallen I out need, of love. I need a timeline because sometimes maybe it doesn't come for in for several in the, months. Oh, well, I mean, you don't really fall in love that hard in several months. I think you're done. I think this is what it is. You're over the honeymoon phase. You're over yeah. that. Yeah, you guys are over the honeymoon phase. Yeah, you're now. over the well, puppy you phase, are, the I cupcake guess. phase. You're the over cupcake it. cupcake phase, though. So now is now you guys are just, now you're partners, right? You guys are partners. Like, that's your man's. Yeah. And it, it kind of just goes into, um, is he there for you? Does he care for you? And uh, the love comes and goes, bro. But uh, the most important part that it's always there, though. Always, That's the most important there. part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you may not be in the honeymoon stage. Like, yeah, dude, every relationship is different. Some people, some relationships. There's always in the honeymoon stage, you know, but that's just some relationships. Nah, that's a fake. That's fake relationships. Oh uh, my bad, bro. It can't be always. In the I guess honeymoon nothing phase. can be positive now, right? Nah. I thought I was supposed to be negative. <laughs> it's a doggy dog world, bro. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be the negative one here. Would you travel seven hours to fuck someone? Yeah. Jesus. Done it many times. Wait, is Not it a just plane? Kidding. Is it a plane? Long story short, met this guy and thing, and things are hitting it off really good. Locations came into place and we found out we were seven hours away from each other. Damn. And he's telling me he wants to make the trip to meet me. <laughs> I'm cheesing, but I'm scared. He just wants to fuck. And I've been celibate for three years. I don't want to ruin it and have it be for nothing because I really like him. Yeah, don't do it then. Don't have him fly out. It depends. No, if this don't. dude has money, he will make that. He will make that for seven hours. Man, what do you think he's gonna to want to fuck? do? Yeah. If he doesn't have money and he wants to go seven hours to see you, then that's a that's a green flag because that's an incredibly inconvenience for him, especially seven hours. How does after you guys talk? Um, how, how's the text? Like, does he nut and he stop texting? Can I, but what if it's like he's broke, but he makes that trip to go see her for seven hours, right? And, you know, it's kind of a, me wait, personally, it's kind of a bill on him. Don't you think he might still have the attitude of like, girl? he's definitely, he definitely, like what we said earlier, you're not going to order delivery and not eat the pizza. So even though he likes you a lot, I think he still ex he expects. He still would want to, you know, you yeah. know, because when's going to be the next time he sees you? So it's, That's, oh shit. it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. It's, it's definitely in his mind. Yeah. So if you're trying to say celibate, just 
Throw that yeah. out the window. Yeah. Or no, just why are you being celibate? You either throw the celibacy out the window or you throw him. Yeah, if you really window. like him, why are you being like, what's, what's, why don't you want to fuck? Because they're not official. And I, I respect that. If you don't want to, you don't want to fuck unless you're in a relationship, that's respectable, honestly. Why? What do you mean, why? why? Some people just, some people just don't want to go and fuck around, bro. She's not fucking around. That's my she point. She really likes him. Yeah, that's my point. But so it's no, not like she's fucking there's, around. There's a difference between liking someone and actually being with them as in like you guys are together together. Yeah, but like it doesn't mean that you're sleeping around just because you fuck someone you really like. It, it's no one's when, saying that. But yeah, some you people, just said that. people no, but I'm saying some people just want to people want to fuck while they're actually in a relationship. Yeah, but for what? Like if you really like that's someone that's just their choice, bro. You know? Just stupid. You know? It's just like stupid. Some people just dumb. You know? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It just happens. <laughs> Am I wrong? You know? You know? You know? Some people have life choices. You may you know? not agree with them, but they happen. <laughs> you know? You know? Am I you know? wrong? You know? You know? Okay. You know? Ooh, sleep paralysis. Let's talk about it. Hey. Oh, mm -mm. <laughs> We're like all like, oh, sleep paralysis. We're like, sorry. He's like, oh, my sleep paralysis. <laughs> sleep paralysis. No. This happened during COVID when Ooh. I first lost my job and was still living with my parents. I would spend my time playing N64, sleeping, nice. watching movies. My sister, who also lives with parents, was working from home. I was taking a nap on the couch on my side with my face towards the inside of the couch and, back, and my back to the open. My sister came in the room during her lunch to take a nap on the other side of the couch. The couches were sectional, so they were connected. All of a sudden, I couldn't move. It felt as if someone had crawled up my side and pressed down very hard. Mm. I almost thought it was my dog, but my dog was five hundred, was five pounds. Five hundred. <laughs> he wasn't that heavy. I couldn't move or breathe. I tried to scream but couldn't. Then I felt more and more pressure all over my whole body. I tried to call my sister's name, but I couldn't. She heard me making weird mouth noises trying to speak or scream, so she called my name. As soon as she said my name, it broke me from my sleep paralysis, and I started gasping for air. She then asked if I was okay. That it that was pretty much it. I told her what happened. It was the weirdest and creepiest experience ever. Yeah, sleep paralysis fucking sucks, bro. I don't know if I've ever went through it or I've already have, and I just don't know what it is. Is this when you're up, you're awake, but you can't move or talk? Like you're See, that's the thing. I don't know if that's either happened to me or if I was just like, a sl I was just having a dream. You get me? Yeah. A dream of me being awake. You get me? Uh -huh. I don't know. Because there's like things where like people say they've, they've experienced it. I'm like, I wonder if I've ever have. I just didn't know what that felt like or nah, the sensation. I don't. I don't. Then you probably haven't had it. That's my point. So it's like, I wonder, have I ever had anxiety before? I'm like, maybe I have, but I just never know what the feeling was of anxiety. Because people can say like, oh, I had anxiety. I'm like, what is anxiety though? Like, what do you what do you feel like? Well, no, what is that feeling when you're going through it? You get me? I can't tell. I can't tell it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get. Anxiety. I know when I feel embarrassed. I know when I feel happy. I know when I feel mad. I feel sad. We know all that. But anxiety, I don't know. The one, the one, do I know if I feel stressed? I probably have, but I don't know if I've ever felt it. You get me? Probably have, but I just don't know. Because you're just locked in. What do you mean? Like if you're stressed, if you have anxiety, just lock in. Maybe depression. I just can't comprehend what you stress and anxiety is. In. I don't know. Like I'm pretty sure maybe I have, or maybe I haven't, but I just don't know what the true feeling of it is. When it when it's actually happening to you at that moment, I get you. You get me? Yeah. Maybe like I'm saying, maybe I have. I just didn't. You just I didn't did, know. That's I didn't what realize it was. that it, that's what it was. You get me? Yeah. Uh, like I'm wondering if like I don't know. Like is it always gonna be like that? <laughs> so like with sleep, sleep paralysis, like maybe I have gone through it. Nah, you definitely know you have sleep paralysis. I don't know. No, you definitely know you have sleep paralysis. Okay. I mean, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right. Next, Saul. If you pull up to San Diego when I fly out there in July. Trust, bro. You're going to wish you didn't want the smoke. Uh, bring the homies so they can drive you back home. Kike y la novia. <laughs> this whole time, I thought it was going to be a chick saying like, you don't want to pull up because you know what you're going to get into this and that. And bam, it's Kike. <laughs> yeah, but I don't I don't get it. Do you want me to fuck you or you want me to fuck you up? Like, which one you want? Like, uh, It's kind of weird. Give me mixed signals here, dog. You want me to beat that face in? You want him to beat, beat your that cheeks ass. in? Yeah, you want to beat that ass or beat that face? All right, last one. Here we go. Oh, you and Kiki having some little... It's one-sided beef, bro. Like, <laughs> he just wants to beat me so bad. Like, bro, like... If you want, like, I'll give you some of my hoes if that's what makes you <laughs> like, feel better. Like, Damn, Kike. I know right now, I know he's like, he's like, I need love. I need some hoes. That's Damn, why he... Kiki. You're going to let him talk to you like that, bro? 
Come on, keeps. man. Hey, 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 I'm telling you, bro. Let him know when you when you land. That way he can just. He, well, that way so can go and pick catch you, you at up. the airport, dog. Right there, damn, right there. Damn, Kike. Hey, man. I, if I hey, respectfully, I wouldn't let that slide, bro. You heard all the things he just said right now, dude. I don't know, man. <laughs> Kike, I'm telling you. Tell him, text him. Yo, I landed. Landed. Come pick me up. Send me your location, dog. <laughs> I'm there. Hey, have Saul be your have Saul pick you up from the airport. I'm, I'm actually you. gonna get a job. See, I got a homie that works at the airport in San Diego. I'm a I'm gonna tell him to give me his uniform. And when you come check in, it's gonna be me in a mask. I'm like surprise. Boop. <laughs> right there. Square shout out. right in the shout, noggin. Shout outs to Kike, bro. <laughs> Uh, hello, bonbones. Here's my story time. I love bonbons. I, female, 20, about to be 21. Shout out I decided to, to open an account on Chispa. Ooh. Thought I should test my waters and start dating after a while of being single. So I matched with this guy, D. He is from Utah. At this time, it was Christmas and he was in Mexico hanging out. Fast forward to March, I drove down to Utah to go shopping and to hang out with guy D. And he flaked on me and oh. said that something came up. I let that pass and not worry about it because life happens. Then we fast tracked it two weeks ago. We made plans again to uh, go to a baile. I was going with my sister and cousins and he was going to do, he was going to go with his friends and cousins and we were going to meet up at the baile because I don't, uh, I don't live, I don't life close to the center. Live. I don't live close I think to you the mean center. Live, yeah. And yet he flaked on me and said he has been drinking all day and his cousins and he bailed on me. What should I do? I'll be moving to Utah in a month and a half for school, and I need some advice on how to talk to him about this whole situation. Shit, should I drop him? What the fuck? Why are you going twice why? for what? Where twice. You going? What, what do you need to talk to him about? It's it's been twice that he's dropped that he literally just flaked on you. Yeah, like the fuck. There's nothing to talk about. Yeah, be a bad especially, bitch. Especially when he, he knew he had plans with you, and he was like, "Ah, oh, but we got we got we got we got too drunk." This is this, like, this, bro. Like, if you're gonna meet a girl. Like, you know, like, all right, I can't drink. Like, even if you had pre-plans before you're going to go out, be like, all right, you know, I'm going to have a couple of drinks, but not that much because I already know yeah, yeah. I'm going to go and see here. We're probably going to drink ourselves anyways, you know? Ask yourself this. What would a bad bitch do? Oh. Ask yourself that every single time. What a baddie what do? Would a ba- what, what, what would a baddie do? Come on. And then you got your answer. But you don't need, you don't need, don't give this, man. It's twice. I don't know. That's two. I get you on the first one. You're a kind person, but two... Nayaritas be so fine. Steph, Steph could get it any day. Damn. Yeah, people from Nayarit, bad as fuck. Example, who else is, example A. Wonder, uh, who else is from Nayarit? Me. Oh, you. Joaquin. Joaquin Hans. Mm-hmm. Hans is from there? Yeah. We some hot ass motherfuckers. I don't know. Is he really from there? Yeah, he's from Nayarit. I feel like... His mom is from Nayarit. He's probably from like the town over or something. <laughs> His mom is from Tepic. His dad's from Juarez. So that's three... Cute as motherfuckers from Nayarit. That's all you need to know. How the fuck is it that three? How how? What's the likeliness of like three of three of us from the team are from Nayarit? From Nayarit. The crazy part about me and Steph is that um, you guys have a not a, not you guys, but family have passed, right? So yeah, our like families have, have like passed, crossed, right? Yeah. Um, her family used to I forgot if it was her family or her. Yeah, someone in her family used to babysit my cousin. I was like, what the fuck. Not Joaquin's sister. Wow. Yeah. So you guys have already crossed paths before. Yeah, yeah, we've crossed paths. Even knowing. Her uncle has been at my house when I was like six, seven years old. That's crazy. Her uncle and my dad used to be best friends. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And you and Steph never even knew. And we never even knew because um her How'd you restaurant guys find out? recently, like two years ago. That's crazy. Because um recent uh first of all her restaurant Las Islas Marias. I've been, me and my family have been going to since, well, because my, my, uh, my dad's best friend was one of the chefs in the Los Angeles location. So, so we, you guys would go. we go there all the time oh, and then okay. he'll pull up to the house and then he'll make, he'll, he'll cook there as well. Sick. Okay. And, um, that's a great, what a great friend. Jesus. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cause they're like, they're really close. And, uh, he ended up getting, he ended up getting shot. They thought he was someone else and they uh, like dead ass, like bro, they lit up his whole car. <laughs> so, uh, RIP to that guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember I was telling, I was telling Steph that like, oh yeah, we used to go to the one in Los Angeles all the time. She's like, oh wow, no way. My uncle ran that one. And I was like, oh shit, who was your uncle? And then she said the name and then I told my dad, he's like, what the fuck? And then my dad asked more questions and then she asked questions and then it turns out we're, we're, we're there. We're like, our past were just there without us. Maybe she's probably pulled up to a party I've had. I used to have really big parties back in the day. 
So maybe she was there. Maybe I was at one of her parties. Who fucking knows? Small world, bro. Small world. I was like, is that the girl you were like, you were trying to flirt with when you were like nine years old? I hope like not. you didn't know it was Steph the entire time. <laughs> I hope you not. You grow up and you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're, you're the one I kissed under the <laughs> jumper? You're the one I kissed inside the jumper when they said that we had a kiss? <laughs> oh my God. They dared me to do it. I promise. I didn't want to. Uh, okay, we'll stop it there. I don't want to know. She has a boyfriend. Steph is just a homie. <laughs> It's um, all jokes. Yeah, it's all jokes. I know y'all motherfuckers be twisting. But, hey, yo, shit. so like, you know how, you know how Quiet on Set is like the biggest thing right now, yeah. right? For the very, very wrong reasons. Yeah. You know? Um, but we got to give, I guess, a little highlight, a little like, make it a little um, shout outs to the MVP, the GOAT, Jerry Trainer, for all of you who know him as Spencer from iCarly yeah. or Crazy Steve from Drake and Josh. He was the one holding it down. He was the one holding it down for the kids when he was on iCarly, who would basically be like he their kinda guardian. Checked, yeah, he checked he would Dan. Check Dan Schneider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would make it seem like it was a joke because, of course, he doesn't want to get fucking fired. But there was Schneider truth. would, yeah, yeah. you know, would fire. Like, let us go home, would, Dan. Yeah, yeah, like, oh, like, like, and you can tell, like, oh, in the video, it looks like it's a joke, which I guess you could say it was a joking manner, but he literally meant like, yeah, he's meaning that shit. He was meaning that shit, like, let the yeah. kids go home, Dan. Blah blah blah, like this and stuff, like, dude. And also, there was always multiple reports, and like, even in um, Jeanette McCurdy's memoir, the book she wrote, that Jerry Trainer always treated them like with such respect, with such care, like like little brothers and sisters. Yeah, he would treat them so good, and that like, in a lot of pictures, Jerry Trainer would be in between him, like would be between the kids and Diane Schneider. So basically, kind of like. Like the, protecting like, them, yeah, yeah, kind of. Like he knew what's up. I don't think he knew what's up. I think he just got those he vibes, got vibes from like executives and like people. And he's like, of course, he can't like, like, like it, 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 um, he couldn't prove anything unless they would come forward to him. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think anyone came forward to him ever. I don't know, like you know. Yeah, the vibes but, are definitely there because even you have you seen the documentary? Fully, not yet, not fully. There's fully. um Drake's dad. He got the vibe from one yeah, of the producers. Joe Bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was uh he was saying he even told Drake's mom he's like don't let drake alone with that guy because mm -hmm. there's just something about him of course like you said mom you know and then just, the mom is just lazy and she did you know it. what sucks about a lot, a lot of these stories uh -huh. is like literally in hindsight it's like the parents probably knew or like they had the feeling mm -hmm. but what did they but what was their main result they said they don't want to stop you from getting all this money in hindsight you could literally maybe not factual but you can have that in the back of your head, kind of like there's a possibility. I don't think for the sexual assault, but I think for the overwork for like, yeah, like, um, yeah, baby, just two more hours. I know it's already overtime, but trust. Like, I think for that, I think for the working conditions, I think they'll let it slide. But for the sexual stuff, I don't think they let it slide because I think there was even a, a mom in one of the first episodes. She was saying like, like, yeah, we like felt weird. This was about the working conditions. They're like, you just. Because everything is so new, right? Like it's all these kids first time acting. They don't know how things go. And they don't wanna they don't wanna get in the way of their kids' dreams. Cause that's even what happened with Drake. Drake was um brainwashed by the producer, Brian Peck. And he told Brian Peck would tell Drake, like, hey, bro, like people like your father is getting in the way in the say, and people are are, are seeing him as a nuisance. And he got in Drake's head. And then so Drake ended up firing his dad because of what uh, the producer told him when none of it was true. That was just so because his dad was so protect protective. That was just so he can get the dad out the picture. Yeah. And it I've seen comments on like videos with that, you know, explaining everything that people say that, you know, because people are like shouting, you know, shouting out Drake's dad for like, you know, being, you know, like that. So, and some people, I guess, their counter is that why didn't you just take him out then? Like, f like fuck the dream, fuck this. Like, if you had that feeling and you had some suspicion, just take him out. Like, because there's someone saying that he did everything he could, and they're like, except take him out of the fucking thing or something like that. Because right? there's no solid evidence. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, but I guess to I'm not even gonna say that's the right thing. I'm just saying to I guess kind of like back that forward. It's kind of like as a parent, if you do kind of have that feeling. And you, or you feel that vibe, or you see whatever stuff like that. As a parent, wouldn't you be like, you know what, son? Like, I know this is what you want to do, but like the feelings there, like you're like, I'm protecting my child regardless. You know what I'm saying? But you say that even, the, but you're not in that situation. You don't know. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I, so I think that's I can see what they mean by like he could have just taken them out. I, I guess, but also like that's victim nah, blaming because yeah, there's also you know because people would say like why didn't he just tell his dad? It's like well because like. 
bro, not everyone that goes through certain things come up right away. You get yeah, me? exactly. It that, doesn't come up right it's away. Not as, that's not an easy conversation. Yeah, to maybe be. for you it's easy. Maybe you could say something in the beginning, but not yeah. everyone, bro. Everyone's different. Exactly. Everybody's different, dude. And you just say that now. like Yeah, but maybe, you don't know if you get put in the yeah, spot. Not, you, you don't, don't know, know how you're going to feel. Yeah. So, like, shout out to his dad. I think he did everything he could. The mom, on the other hand, kind she's of. Not, and the mom wasn't, I don't know, the mom was not in the I think the mom, they said the mom, was, she's, I think he said like, his mom just, was just lazy, I guess, yeah. when it came to, like, taking him to the things. Yeah. So I'm not calling her lazy in general. I'm just saying that was that's just, what they, that was said. That was said, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, but I'm saying I guess a lot of people are saying that do believe that uh, some of the parents of the other kids kind of knew they had a vibe, but they didn't risk it because the money that was coming in type stuff. I don't want to say that's factual. I don't want to say that's 100 percent true. Yeah. But also, I don't think we could literally say that like it's not fully true you get me like it's a it's a possibility and i'm, I'm think, saying yeah. it could be a possibility i'm not saying it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. true i'm saying remember possibilities because some parents do run with they, they want their kids to be famous and they want them to make that's on the money. yeah on Jeanette mccurdy side i would see that you know what i'm saying because that, that was you know what more I'm that was more on just like the work conditions not the sexual stuff i'm saying i'm not saying it's true i'm saying possibilities possibilities especially when you think about all the things that have opened up and things that we've been knowing that we've thought had in the back of our heads come out to be true yeah but you never also, know certain some other things could be true you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying yeah possibilities yeah. possibilities man i'm not saying they're fully true i'm not saying i really believe them but I'm also saying that I'm not going to just be like, oh, yeah. look, it's not true. But also when they came out who were like the ones doing it, everybody would say, say everybody said it's the person you least expected. Mm -hmm. They're yeah, like that, the that person. Too. That too. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, oh shit, what the fuck? Yeah. That's so, what I'm saying. I want everyone to think that like I'm saying all this, like the parents fucking you. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying though, for certain occasions, for certain people, for certain child actors, some parents look over it. maybe just looked over it because their child was making this money and they're famous now and this and that. There's a possibility. Yeah. Okay, I'm it's not like gonna slim. Yeah, yeah, it's a slim possibility, but I'm not gonna say that I can dis dis I can discount it right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, get you. Yeah, get especially you. with this world of Hollywood and how fucking crazy. Back then, it was worse for all the conspiracies that we've heard, and it's never proven true. Now everything that's coming out and it has been proven true. That's where I'm kind of like that's that's my mindset right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, what else is true? You, get you know me? what I'm waiting for? Bro? You know what I'm saying? I'm waiting for the the 90 minutes with Amanda Bynes. Bro, she definitely needs one. She, she, she went off the rails. She needs to get what on a podcast. What we thought was her going off the rails back in the day. We had no idea. We had no idea. So we need her. Remember side when of the Britney story. Spears went off the rail? We didn't know what was going on. And then we found out the the was, whole she was like a basically she was under a slave. Like this, she was a slave because under contract. Yeah, like yeah. bruh, bruh. How did that contract even exist? Exactly, bro. You so, know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, bro poor Amanda Bynes, bro. If you see, like how she was back then, now you see her and how she turned out. That's just crazy. She's probably like the, the, the worst case of child actors gone wrong besides Orlando Brown, Brown or Bloom. You know what? Also, you know who doesn't get enough credit for like fucking exposing people? But I guess like his word was never, you know, like taken serious. Who? Rob Schneider. Rob Schneider. Oh, yeah, yeah, He yeah, spoke yeah. up so many times. Like it's like years ago and everything. That's why you don't see him in a lot of movies anymore and anything like that because he was against producers and executives Being and weird all shit. these shady shit that he would expose here and there and no one ever like would listen to him but there's videos of him even explaining everything and stuff like that he would like say like these people are shady as fuck this and that and then you know until recently now that's when people are like oh shit hey he was right he was that's why like have you noticed that like, he's not really anything yeah you get me like bes besides being in anything that like adam Sandler's in you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying because like that's his boy I think it sucks too. I think he was in a roast where someone mentioned how he gets no gigs. But imagine just it was like literally him being like, "Well, fuck these people, yeah, like, fuck these." But without ups. being able to say it, that's just yeah. Oh man, it gives me uh, yeah. gives me the world is just so fucked, bro. I'm like, uh, do you? I mean, I could tell you a different one that's pretty that will get you even more hot right tell now. Tell me, tell me, bro. All right, sadly, sadly. The sad truth that has happened this year, by the way. This year? Um, well, the the final, the, the court case and like the final, like the sentencing okay. happened in March of this year, March 2024. Crystal Candelero. Uh -huh. So if you don't know, she left her 16-month-old daughter, Jalen, mm -hmm. at home by herself. 10 for 10 days in a row while she 
went and go went and partied up in Puerto Rico with one of her like guy friends or boyfriend or whatever. She left her 16 month old daughter alone at the house with no one else to look after her without even telling her parents or anyone. She left it there with like a couple bottles, bottles of milk, and that was it in her crib. And that was it. For 10 days, she comes back. Daughter, of course, sadly passed away because of it, because it was extreme thirst and starvation. Oh, my God. And she was like, of course, you know, she was entirely sold. She entirely sold herself as well, you know? So when I tell you, bro, this is a 16th month old child, Jalen, who was left alone, bro. 10 days, no food, nothing, no care, none of that. Just so this fucking lady can go and party it up in Puerto Rico. Bro. I am. It happened in Ohio. Yeah. When I heard this story, bro, I was fucking mad. Look how like just bro. innocent and just just uh, just bro. A neighbor's doorbell camera captured the 60 month old frequent screams, including one around 1 a.m. two days after her mother left. They would hear screams, but no one knew what was going on. No one knew what was up. At some point, dude, like, bro, the, she's 16 months old. She left her alone for 10 days, thinking nothing would fucking happen. She came back and then saw that she was dead, and that's when she called the police and everything, and the ambulance and everything, of course. Bro, like, de- she was dehydrated and emaciated. 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 Bro, you know what's the f- most fucked up part? Crystal's parents at the court case pleaded with the judge for mercy. Fuck, you know, fuck, fuck your, your daughter yeah, fuck and your also mercy. you guys are innocent in this but fuck you for pleading guilty i know as a parent you stand by your child through many things but not something like this this is when at that point your child is probably not even your fucking child anymore i'm sorry she left your granddaughter home alone for 10 days alone 16 months by the way, dog, imagine being the cop and seeing this. I don't even want to read this. Bro, if I was the cop, I don't know how to even handle fucking not wanting to beat the fuck out of her. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The you way know? they found the baby is, in, I don't know. You're reading, reading this, right? Yeah. You're reading this, right? And then the parents are trying to blame the a a mental, situ- health, a, a mental health. Stop trying to blame everything on mental health when there's actual people going through mental health crisis. Stop it. Stop. No. She went to Puerto Rico with someone else for 10 fucking days. Bro, no, there's no excusing this at all. Nothing. Get me out of this page. Holy Bro, shit. She got she got charged this month. Her like finally sentenced this to this month, March 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh she was giving life in prison. Good. Great. Great. Make her don't even feed her. No, I mean like no, like no, I want her to keep living through jail for life. No, but I want her, like, no, 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 no. Hold on. I want the inmates oh, to just constantly. You know, I can't even say that because like I am no one. I am no one to give a punishment. I am not God. I am not whoever you believe in as your higher up to say anything of like what this person deserves. Right. Yeah. I am no one. But let's just say. I hope her time in prison isn't great. Let's just say that. I Let's agree. just say that. Let's just keep it at that because I am no one to be the, the punisher. I'm no one to be the one to say who, how your no life judge. should be going. I'm not, I am not the one to judge you. Even though this is a crazy case, I'm still not, I am not the, what do you call it? The executioner. I'm not the whatever. Yeah. So I can't, just know that I am not a fan of this woman. Let's, that's just, that's speaking nicely of it. Yeah. I'm just saying, bro. Let's just hope, I'm just saying, let's just hope let's that, hope let's just hope the inmates greet her stab her give her a little poke. all i'm saying is let's just hope the the, the inmates give Deal her a great her. greeting give her a very welcoming greeting yeah they take her food i want her to bro, take you know what's sad about this no one in the family of Jalen. by her name is Jalen. i've already said but rest in peace to the little Jalen dude no one in her family would speak up or give the final like you know speech in the at the court case. No one in her family would do it. Not even the parents. Not even like the 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 um, grandparents. So it took Elizabeth Mooney, who was the um, the autopsy person. I forgot, I forgot their names. Um, what's their their profession? 
the um, crime scene investigators? No, no, no. Well, the op the people that do the autopsies. I know there's like a medical, there's like a, there's a title. There's a, they have a, like a title. I don't, I don't know the title. But basically Elizabeth, Elizabeth Mooney, who, who did Jalen's autopsy. Um, she's the one that gave a speech um, but on the behalf of Jalen. And it was very sad because she goes into detail on wow. her autopsy and how they found her. And it is just extremely sad. You can, you could just hear the sadness in her voice, but she kept it very professional you could tell that she wanted to cry, but she was very, very professional. Shout outs to her mm -hmm. that did it on her beha on Jalen's behalf because no one else, for whatever fucking reason, wanted to say anything from the family. Like, no one from the family wanted to say anything. That's crazy. Anything. Your innocent 16-month-old granddaughter, cousin, whatever, niece, no one wanted to say anything? Nobody? Nobody? Really? Just thinking about that. It took a stranger... Yeah, someone that has nothing to do with her, but oh. did her autopsy that to come up forward and make a speech and deliver this sad speech of explaining what happens during starvation, extreme starvation and dehydration. She explained what happens, by the way. No human should ever go through that, especially a, a 16, 16 month, month old baby. Damn. Whoa. she's definitely in a way better place now. Um, and the uh, mom is in a worse place now. So good. Crazy. Um, I know this was a dark episode. We we started all over the place, but you know it's this is how life is, bro. So this episode go is filled a with a lot of crazy conspiracies yeah. and a lot of real life stuff that's happening. Like, re like it's crazy how much real life stuff has been happening. Yeah, and that's stuff the stuff that we know of. That's just the stuff we know of. We um let's end the podcast on a positive note. Um, was there anything positive going on? <laughs> I don't go to go hug a tree. Oh, um, I guess in my personal, I am finally in the 190s. Finally, motherfuckers. Nice. Jesus You're in the Christ. I'm in the 190s now. Dang. I'm like weight wise. Damn. Yeah. yeah, I know. Damn. I know. Fuck, God. Finally, dude. Right? Fuck. Huh? Nah, I'm, I'm chilling. Um, hit me up on Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to tell you, hell yeah. Um, yeah, I'm in the 190s finally. I guess you want to leave on that positive. I mean, it's a positive note for me, but. For for the many fucked up things happening in my life as well, but That's what I'm thinking positive note. One thing will happen this past week. I don't think we can be positive, bro. I'm sorry, but I know I brought that, but I had to talk about it, bro. Because I mean, I could I could get real fuck boy. Um, how about that? Real I don't, quick, I don't <laughs> think there's a positive note we can leave on, bro. I can leave on some fuck boy shit. You know, you can always. You can. I don't always, think anything's gonna top this, bro. No, but just to like bring up the the energy. Oh, um, okay. fuck. I don't know if that, should I expose myself? Expose myself. Just I'm exposing myself just for your guys' entertainment and pleasure. I got a, or yo. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, um, I mean, I, I took out another badge. I got a bartender's number. That was cool. Fucking big booty Latino, some nice titties. Yeah. She's probably going to listen to this too. My bad. Shout I'm just bringing you. up the mood. All right. Shout outs to you. Hey, just. I guess, like yeah. we said, trying to bring up the movie. Yeah, Caesar joined us, but he's back here. If you guys heard him, the giggles, he's back. When did he join? When I was telling the... the Talking about take the mic. Oh, yeah, that's when he came up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So in case you... I thought he was on the screen. No, he's not on the screen. Uh -huh. Um, But yeah, that will wrap up today's episode, but we're going to shout out our friends on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's another place where we don't get as dark, but we get a little bit more raunchy. So if you want to hear some some shit like that um go 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 uh if you need something to lift up your mood just go go over to patreon right now if you're on spotify you can uh listen to the patreon clips on spotify but you have to uh you have to sign into patreon so uh we're gonna shout out our sugar mamas and sugar daddies shout out to jasmine torres jasmine love you andy no love andy we'll give you some love carla corazon carla corazon shout out to your candle business we want some candles too thank you robert to hoochie robert how hoochie are you alex galindo alex and your lindo galindo fidel the billionaire menaces fidel with the big menaces jonathan jonathan <laughs> Breezy, what a loquita. Breezy, what a loquita. David nah, Naranjo. David, you're so orange. Gloria Maravilla. I swear the fucking best last name. I swear. Marry me for that last name. Jesus Guzman. Jesus with the Guzman. Maria Felipe. Mira, Miriam. <laughs> Maria Felipe. Karen Cita. Ua. 
BBL Dahlia. That is facts. 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 Bottle service tier. Oh, man. It's, we, we talk about BBLs. What about... I might get something for him. We got to make something. But Alvaro you know, Benitez. Alvaro, you know what? You know how we have Bibli Latinas, BBLs? Alvaro right there is a... Big booty. Big, no, he's a big WL. Big what? Big, big wiener, wiener Latino. Latino. <laughs> he's a big... <laughs> A big wiener Latino. <laughs> Alvaro is a big wiener Latino. He's a BWL, bro. <laughs> Got rated Ramon Razor Hedges Flores. Rated our superstar this dude, over here. This dude just did a huge event in Arizona. Shout outs to Ramon. Uh, I want to go to the next one. So for sure, we got to go out there. I want to hear you just fucking use, yeah. use, use your your announcement. Fucking, use your announcement. Yeah, I want to see your freaking mic skills. Then we got Sandra Gonzalez. Sandra, I love the pink hair. I don't know if you still have that pink hair, but love it. Oscar Martinez. Oscarine Martin. Kike, dead man walking Perez. <laughs> <laughs> Kike La Novia. Bro, I'm hoping that changes to Kike and I got my... My ass whooped by Saul. Oh my gosh, not that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like Kike and I got my girlfriend now, Perez. Oh, okay, or yeah, Kike yeah, yeah, and yeah, I got yeah. my host. Someone, one of the two. All right. And uh, Liliana Juarez. Lilianita, love you too, little girl. I mean, not little girl. I mean, love you, sweetie pie. I don't know. <laughs> I fucked that up. I fucked it up. I'm sorry. Thank lady. you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on every social media platform at Saul V. Gomez. Follow me, uh, airbear underscore IE. Follow Caesar at I know Caesar. Yep. And we'll see you guys next. Oh, also, uh, follow if you want to hear sports stuff, follow Could Have Been, been Pro. pro. Help us out, guys. Hopefully, I'll hope, uh, see you. Hopefully, keep it going, guys. Please, thank you. We love you. Love you so much, guys. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.